Hello, hello. Testing one, two, three. Aralita, Anon Echo, Domination. How you doing? Zenalt. Just wanted to pop in and say hello while I'm on my break. We'll probably be lurking until I get off work. Cool, cool. Um, it's only 8 o'clock for me, so not too bad. Should be streaming for a few hours at least, so all is well. Handsome is handsome. Uh, I'm going to order some dinner. Why? Because I feel like it. What should I get? I feel like, um... Man, what should I get? Mm. Italian or Korean? Uh, I don't really mean... Okay, let me have a look. Italian. It's just pizza. <laughs> no, Pizza Hut is not Italian. What are you talking about? Cafe Venice? Oh, God, okay. What is this? Garlic bread? Garlic bread does sound pretty good. Mrs. Guides, how are you doing? How are you? Just trying to figure out what I'm going to order for dinner. Keep in mind, I had chicken katsu curry last night. So, I was thinking like maybe... I don't know. Something not to do with chicken? Get Italian and talk in an Italian accent the whole stream? That's a funny way to get yourself banned from my chat room. I'm kidding. Shouldn't, like, uh, Zay not technically have an Italian accent? Because, like, all of his battle themes are, like, Italian or something. That would be pretty cool, like, uh, a live action Kingdom Hearts series or movie. But Zay not has, like, a really thick Italian accent. That'd be pretty cool. And like Scarlet Kyum's kinda like Is it is it Italy? Is it Greece? I don't know. Um anyway, I'm good. All's good on my end. Um still getting over this cold. We're about to get our first Nando's where I live. I got way too animated about that. What the fuck? I was like, Nando's! You know what? Like I love Nando's, don't get me wrong, but it's not takeaway food. It's just not. Like, it's like, it doesn't, it's not, it's not fast food, but it, it's so, like, just everywhere that it feels like it. But it's not takeaway food. What about some pasta, like mac and cheese? So do you want to hear something about me that nobody ever believes? And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Like, I... I normally joke around and I kid and I fuck around all the time, but what I'm about to say, I, I s swear to you, I, I could not be more honest. Nobody ever believes me, at least to the extent in which I want them to. I've never had pasta before in my life, and I don't want to. Oh, but sorry, you must have had like a little- no. No, no, I've never had, like, pasta. I've had, like, spaghetti, like, once. I don't like it. I'm, I'm a very, like... I was a very picky eater when I was younger. Like, very. I had to do a lot of, like, work to grow out of that. And I'm pretty much fine now. But, like... Put it this way, I had my first slice of pizza when I was, like, 14 or 15. Um... Had my first burger around, like, the same age. Um... But I'm pretty much good with anything now, except pasta. 
What do you consider pasta if spaghetti doesn't count as pasta? Like, you know, like swirly, you know, like mac and cheese or something like that, you know? But yeah, texture for me is huge. I can't get anything, like, if it's like too squishy. Like, for me, I love rice now, but as a kid I hated rice, for example. Um, yeah. And I'm just not really too big on pizza either. I've never really been like a pizza person. I've never had mac and cheese, no. I'm not a cheese person either. <laughs> I'm not I'm not too big on cheese. Um so when people are like, you know, twisting parmesan on on their on their shit, I'm like, "Eh, not really for me." I don't know. I like meat. Love meat. I don't hate cheese, but like, it's just, yeah. And I'm just not really that big on pizza either. Like, if I were to get something like a fast food, like, you know, takeaway or whatever, pizza would not be like my first option. Um, yeah, I was like raised on like chicken and turkey and beef and um, bread. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, we just had um, a Popeyes open recently. I've never had it, but I want to try it. I need to order this food. What am I getting? Okay. So with that being said... Hmm... I hate cheese, but mac and cheese gets a pass. I can't have too much cheese. I just don't really... Like, if I have a mouthful of cheese, I want to, like, spit it out. So, like, when people eat, like, m fried mozzarella sticks, I'm like, wow. Like, what? Ugh. You said Italian. No, someone in, in Twitch chat recommended Italian. And I, and I looked and I was like, okay, well, other than pizza, like, what can I get that's takeaway and Italian? Bad cheese takes? Oh, yeah. I'm just not a very cheesy guy. But people in chat are very cheesy. So, you know. Figures, I suppose. Oh, Indian. Holy shit, I could get that. That's so expensive, though. Oh, I could. Chicken tikka masala. Holy shit. Go get some tikka masala. But I'd, I'd sit here eating it for like 25 minutes though. <laughs> I cannot live without cheese. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like people, you either love cheese or you're like, eh. For me, like, yeah. Unless it's like on pizza or something, then I don't really care for it. Or like maybe, it also has to be melted for me. I can't like have cold cheese. I love curry. Also guys, how are you doing? I love curry. And I just noticed something about me as well uh, that I never picked up on until I started streaming. And it's because I had chicken katsu curry during my Kingdom Hearts 3 Let's Play and I was playing Kairi. And when I say it very fast, curry and Kairi sound exactly the same. So people just kept, yeah, thinking that I was eating Kairi. So that's that was very funny. Um, I love I love like Indian, especially like chicken tikka masala. Chicken korma is like chicken korma wishes it could have been tikka masala, in my opinion. It's like weaker, but it's so expensive though. And also, certain things just aren't takeaway food, you know. Like I can't get like ramen or anything like that's not takeaway food like you have to kind of sit in a really nice ramen place to get the experience garlic bread does sound pretty good and i could get takeaway nandos but i again like nandos isn't really you can't have like lukewarm nandos you know what i mean
Yeah, I can't believe Mrs. Guide said that uh, there's a Nando's coming close to them. That's amazing to me. And I also love, love, love spicy food. Um, so like, I remember, like this was years ago, uh, because I was just like addicted to spice. Um, my dad, whenever he like go out or something, he always try and get like the hottest sauce he could find, and it was never hot enough for me. So he went to this like the back streets of I don't know Hounslow or something, into this like Indian store, like spice specialist place. And he asked the guy, like, what's the spiciest thing you have? And he's like, come over here, come over here. And he showed him this, like, bottle. And he's like, no, 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 no. You don't get it, you don't get it, you don't get it. Right. I, he's already tried this. Get him something spicier. And he goes like this. And invites him in the back. And gives him, like, this unlabeled plastic box of just, like, powder. And says it's on the house. And he just gave it to him. And, uh... He had no idea what it was. But he tried, like... A, like, it was very, very, like, red. It was very aggressively, like, orangey red. He took a, a bit of it on his finger. Licked it. And he was out of commission for, like, two hours. I had it on my chicken and rice for dinner that night. I felt nothing. So... That, I think, says, you know, a lot about, like, my tolerance with spicy food. So I love spicy stuff. Um, I also tried the bomb hot sauce, which is, like, I think number eight on um, hot ones. Again, I'm, I'm okay with it. So... I don't know. Ikana, how you doing? Korean? But like... You guys have to realize I live in the UK. And we don't have like the option, like the, the fast food takeout options that you guys do. Like, for example, fast food for us is like McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, maybe Subway. That's pretty much it. There are a few areas in, in London that have like a Five Guys or like a Wendy's. Like those have kind of popped up recently here and there, but like that's pretty much it. But like I keep hearing stories about like Jack in the Box or Popeyes or like Denny's or White Castle, like all these shit. All this shit, I have no idea what they are. Like, I've seen so many, like, tier lists on YouTube, like, discussing what the best fast food place is, and like, there's, like, 35. So, like, yeah. Those are, like, the fast food joints, you know what I mean? Other than that, it's just, like... Is it a burger place in the UK, or ice cream, like, in Australia? It's very much a burger place, it's very, yeah. I don't recall ice cream being a thing for from Wendy's, so yeah, it's very like you know burgers and fries. So. Um, guy, I need to order. Guys, I need to order some food. What am I fucking doing? I'm gonna get a burger. Why not? Oh, I could get some fish and chips from the local chippy with some mashed potatoes. Sorry, some mushy peas. Um. Yes, we. I, you kind of we do have ice cream. It's just not like a thing. Like, of course we have like McFlurries, but like, I think what PJ was saying was, is it an ice cream? It's not like an ice cream place. It's a fast food joint where you can get ice cream, I guess. Um, I'm not going to accept beans on toast slander in my chat room. Uh, I hope you guys know that. So uh, watch your fucking mouth. Um, ooh. I could.
get a burger. With burgers in mind, do you like Wendy's? Wendy's is like um, a very aggressive 4 out of 10 for me. It is like ridiculously mediocre. But I'm going to say that maybe like the spices and like the ingredients that we have over here is, is very, very different. And it's like not even close to the American Wendy's, so. Do you like Wendy's nuts are in your mouth? Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Okay then, so... There we go. Uh, so, there... There is a independent burger place called Sobe. I've had them before, they're really, really nice. Lance, how are you doing? Hope all is well. Look at a, a spicy. Uh, Burger King, I'm not even going to talk about that. Burger King is like one of the worst things I've ever put in my mouth ever. Um. Man, I'm pretty hungry. Indian sounds pretty good to me right now. Chinese as well. Could get some Chinese, some sweet and sour, but like, ah, I don't know. Hmm. Oh man. What's up, Sonny? By the way, Namine video was awesome, bro. Totally worth the wait for March Caprice. Thank you so much. Umbra, how you doing? Look, it's a decent mod. How you doing, Umbra? What's going on? Um... Also ignore whatever's happening in, in, in the YouTube chat. Uh, hey, I saw the video on Nominee yesterday. I have to say it's one of the best I've seen in a while. Both editing and narration are perfect. I mean, like, I've kind of been like, you know, I was a little bit apprehensive because like, A, I can't draw. But like, you know, Nominee isn't like, you know, photorealistic in terms of talent. So like, it was okay. Um, but also it wasn't like crazy balls to the walls like Brain Teaser was. You know, because March Caprice has had a deadline and stuff, so um, there was always that behind it. But I was very, very happy with the script of, of the nominee video. I think it had a really nice message, um, and I think I conveyed my points as well as I could have without it kind of dragging on. Um, but yeah, we get a burger. Let me see how much Indian is. But like... Ooh, tikka masala with some naan bread. Hmm. Yeah. I might just get a subway. I might just get like a... a sub. You know, might just get that. It's quick as well. Ooh, and I can get some chicken bites as well. I think I'll get that. I'm just gonna get Subway. Sorry, guys. The outro of the nominee video was heavy. Best outro I've watched. Damn, really? Cool. Pretty sick, though, right? Man, I loved, you know, that shot with the, uh, the no name and like the fog. If I got, if I told you guys how I, how I did that, I'd get canceled. 
because that was by complete accident. I was like, holy shit, that looks really sick. I'm just going to keep it. Like, it was just supposed to be a spotlight in an empty room, but, like, I was like, ah, I don't really know what I'm doing with, like, particle effects and Blender yet. So how do I, like, fill the room with fog? And I just, like, had, like, a bunch of little lights, and I just twisted them, and it gave, like, the illusion of motion in, like, the air and the atmosphere, and it just looked like fog, and I was like, I'm just gonna use that. But uh, at the moment, I am currently messing around with Blender and animating and rigging certain models and seeing what I can do and like importing certain assets from certain games um but it, it's very very difficult because like I don't have the same technology that Tokyo team had in the early 2000s you know what I mean Oh, the words. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really nice message. I really like that. And also, like, David... So I asked him, like, Hey, David, can you do, like, Namine's theme? But, like, when I say this, like, just transition into Sanctuary. And he's like, yeah, cool. And then, like, two days later, he sent me that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna cry. It's fine. I'm just gonna sit in the corner and cry. Actually, I wasn't crying because the first time I heard it, I was on the bus. I was going to get my hair cut. And I just had my headphones in. And I was just listening to it the entire way. Like, just over and over again. I was like, this is amazing. Um... Cool. Let me just order this food real quick. And, and then we're going to be playing some video games. Um, create my own sub. Yes, please. Uh, roast chicken breast foot long. I'll get that, please. Hearty Italian, hearty Italian bread. See, we're getting some Italian stuff. Uh, I will make it toasted. Um. What are you brewing for the next video? Curiosity asking her. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Hold on. Let me get some bacon on there, please. Double meat as well. Uh. I regret to inform you that there are videos inside of your game. What? This sucks, okay. I'm getting a burger, fuck this. <laughs> okay. Some Cajun fries, why not? Cool.
Cool. I have officially ordered my food. That almost took as long as releasing a new video. So, um... Let's boot up the game. Game cam. Almost time to prepare for an apparently big storm coming in a couple hours. Fun, fun. Yeah, good luck with that. Good luck. Stay safe. So what am I brewing for next video, Curiosity? So, what was teased at the end of my Namine video, it depends on, like, what I'm able to do in regards to, like, my schedule. But I'm really, really hoping... I know you guys can't see anything, hold on. Um... You should see it in, like, ten seconds. Um... What I'm thinking, because I I know, because Guides is in here, um, I know that I really, really, really want to make it for Reconnect next year. So, I think, so, the next big project I'm working on is a very Lushu-centric video, and I am collabing with uh, my good buddy Demo, who is responsible for pretty much everything you've seen to do with the Key Saga and Union Cross and, and dubbing and other theories, State of the Heart podcast. Um, it's going to be, you know, Blender animated uh, transitions and cutscenes and stuff like that. Uh, the scope of, uh, you know, I guess, the scope of the entire project, like I want it to be a budgeted production. Um... I want it to have voice acting and an original score. Um, and it's basically like a summary of, of Lucy's life and each, um, each section is going to focus on uh, a, like, like a vessel. So like the first section would be uh, the original Lucy. But lately, <laughs> I've been thinking about going actually backwards. So the video starting with Zigbar, and then going to Brag, and then going to Bragi, then maybe going to whatever happens with him in Missing Link, because that's going to be huge, uh, and then ending with the original Lushu, which is going to be like Demo's um, chance to shine as well. Um, it's in the very, very early stages of planning. Um... But the ideas that I have for it are, are so, like, vivid, you know, as vivid as they were when I had, like, the brain charity running around in the castle, you know, stuff like that, so, uh, yeah. Also, I'm just fiddling around with a uh, kingdom key, keychain that I have. I have no idea what to do with it. Because it's too big to fit on my actual keys. It's just kind of here on my desk all the time. I might, like, stick it to my wall or something, I don't know. Um. Yeah, is it going to be a theory? Is it going to be something else? It's going to be a lot of different things. It's going to be like, oh god. Do I start new game? Right? Because I'm playing Aqua now. Uh, let's see proud mode. Yes. Off. Um, it is going to be peak. So basically what I was saying is, it's going to be such a big project, and I have, again, a lot to learn about Blender, and I want it to be a league above Brain Teaser. And, of course, in order to do that, I need a lot of time. So it can't be released in like a month or two. So I'm thinking of releasing a lot of videos like my nominee video. 
uh, that I have planned and other theories like that, like, you know, 20 minute videos here and there. And then for the big demo collab Lushu video, um, I could possibly premiere it on March Caprice or, <laughs> or I could release like a trailer for March Caprice. Maybe like bring it to reconnect with me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Um. Premiere it on IMAX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually gonna go to the um, the Globe Theater. It's gonna be like a Shakespearean production, actually. Uh. Would you like to skip the introduction? Yes, please. I live on a mountain, so a tornado is very unlikely to hit, but it's still a possibility. So I usually pack when there's a chance of tornadoes. Stuff in backpacks that wouldn't be able to be replaced. Stuff like unique gifts, yearbooks, stuff I've got in other countries, SD cards. Jeez. I mean, like, as much shit we talk about the UK, like, at least we don't get, like, life-changing, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like, stuff like earthquakes and tornadoes, storms and stuff like that. I will wear 3D glasses during the showing. Yeah, catastrophes. Like, yeah, like, I mean, like, this country is already a fucking catastrophe in, this, in and of itself, but, like, I'm not, like, looking at the weather forecast and fearing for my life, if you know what I mean. Um. So, this is a character called Ericus. He's from Kingdom Hearts. Don't know if you guys do that. Yeah, the heat waves are pretty bad. I think it was either last year or the year before. It was the first time I think I felt what it's like to be in like 40 degree heat. And again, some people don't understand that like, A, like, I have like the, the pastiest, whitest skin. And I, I sweat and burn up like a madman. Um, but also, like, houses over here are just, like, not built. Like, air conditioning isn't really a thing in most houses. Like, at, at workplaces, sure, but, like, most houses are, like, built on, like, Victorian-style infrastructure. And it's built to retain heat. And the insulation is, is, is different, right? Um, so, like, are we going to, like, invest in air conditioning? around the house for like a couple days throughout the year maybe or are we just gonna like suffer and die um you know i'd rather be cold than hot just personally because when it's cold you can just put a coat on you can just warm up but when it's hot ggs ggs Okay, so this is Aqua Better Battle System mod. This is exciting. I kind of wanted to say Ven for last because I think he's going to be the most like. Okay. Okay, so, so she doesn't have air dash. She has air guard, which is pretty cool. Um. Pretty cool. I can, like, guard cancel. So what does the mod do? So the mod is very, like, subtle. Um, it lets you basically cancel anything into anything. Almost. So, like, you can cancel a hit mid-animation into a guard, you can cancel a guard into a dodge, you can cancel a dodge into 
I don't think you can cancel dodges, but you can cancel anything into a gudge or a dodge. A dodge or a guard, and vice versa. So you can do like one, two, guard, one, two, guard, one, two, guard. You can like string together like your own combos and stuff. So it's really, it's just really nice, and it makes the game flow a lot better. So it's basically a lot more like Devil May Cry. And it's how this game should have been. Which brings us to your next trial. Because we've like spoken about the design of Birth by Sleep and how it kind of focuses more on the triangle button than it does the X button. And in my opinion, a Kingdom Hearts game should be about hitting things with your Keyblade, aka pre pressing the X button. So we get 40 degrees every year. Yeah, 100 degrees. And I would never wish it on something without, yeah. It's ridiculous. I've been studying these cutscenes, by the way, like how they're done. A lot of um, the fights in this game, in terms of cutscenes, they use like a lot of stock animations from like, in-game stuff. But Birth by Sleep specifically does a lot to a lot with um like depth of field. I think. But there is always next time. That is all. Aqua, as our newest keyblade might as well mention it again just for people that may have joined now and, and haven't really seen anything of my streams in the past couple of days but like um ericus has black hair and a red hairband and it's in my opinion supposed to harken back to uh brain with the black hat and the red feather because you know it's heavily implied that brain is his ancestor What do you make of Ventus? He ain't gonna cut it. Somebody's gotta break that loser in. Not here, you won't. I have to keep up appearances. I know that. Dang it, he didn't read my other message out loud, so I can't clip it and blackmail him later. What did you say? I will also gift Ikana flight. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. And in so much as you are now, I don't think so. Master, you must always be conscious of. What is that? What happened? The chat room's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Probably because Ven is, like, not a great character. He's just not very cool. Imagine being a Ven fan! Ugh! Just thought about that. Ugh. Give me chills. We were talking about, like, who's your top three favorite characters in Kingdom Hearts. Yesterday. Like, imagine being like, oh, Ven's my favorite. I'm like, oh my god. Creepy, right? Ha ha ha. This pair. That is an amazing emote. Momo PK Dispair. Imagine being an Odin fan. Yeah, to be honest, imagine being a fan of a character who's like over the age of 50 in Kingdom Hearts. Like, people say that, like, female characters get a bad rep, which, you know. They do in Kingdom Hearts, and it's like a lot to do with what my Nomine video is trying to promote, but characters over the age of 50, that's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. Yeah, Ven is over the age of 50 technically too. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Pretty rough. Characters are out here balding, making excuses, you know... Out here being Ericus, you know, Tyrants of Light, so Odin and Yen Sid, you know, jeez. Handsome the Wise? Oh my god. Oh my goodness. My favourite character is Diz. 
Imagine. I'm fucking around. Ven's alright. He's okay. My top, th my top three favorite are younger, young, 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 old Zay. <laughs> younger, young, 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 old Zay and the guy that dies in Traverse Town, and rocks a stick. Master Xehanort is amazing though. I love Master Xehanort. But in the context of Kingdom Hearts, he does get a bad rip. The cutoff point is like late twenties, yeah. How can I? When you are so obsessed with power. The guy that tries dies in Travis Town, yeah. His name's Travis. That's Travis right there. Travis McTown. Fear leads to obsession with power. An obsession beckons the darkness. You must never forget. Thank you, Master. I swear. Look at this old man grooming. This perfectly capable young man who is also not dumb, despite what the community may think. Actual favorites are Lucy, Young Zay, and Kyrie. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know. Young Zay, not fan. You know, a little bit. Okay. I'll get a pass. My name is Willa Holland. You'll see he has what it takes to be a master. Aqua's theme is like the saddest theme in the entire series. I'm sorry. He's not as weak as you think. Like Roxas's theme is really tragic too, but Aqua's theme is like, ugh. The strings are like heart wrenching. Lance says Master of Masters, two Vinitas, three Aqua, four Riku, five Malusha. That's a good list. That's a good list. It's a very good list. Shion's theme is amazing as well. I just think Aqua's is just sadder. It's very sad, but Shion's is like... Yeah. Definitely in the same tier, but like... Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. I can hear Kino crying in the background. Yeah, Aqua's is just agony. It's complete agony. Ziggy Ased? Ased? I've never ever in my life met an Ased fan. I don't have really much of an issue with him, I just never met like an Ased fan. Do I have a top three? Yes. At the moment, my top three in order. Zigbar. Zigbar has always been my favorite character ever since Birth by Sleep. I said that in my nominee video, but like... I say that because people might misconstrue and, and think that I only like Zigbar because he's Lushu. That is not the case. I think most people like Zigbar because of his character, his characteristics and his attitude and stuff like that, um, and his personality. He's just an amazing character. And in an organization full of cryptic, dead-eyed, you know, 
transcendental mumbo jumbo dickheads. You know, Zigbar really does stand out, and so does Larkseen. Larkseen's definitely in the same tier, but uh, Zigbar for me is, is just, yeah, definitely takes the cake. And we need to see if Elrena keeps the Larkseen, right? Elrena needs to keep that side of her. Um, so Zigbar for me is number one. Sora is number two. We talked about this yesterday. You know that meme, that diagram of like, there's like the low IQ, then there's like the big dip, like the, sorry, the, like the valley or like the, uh, the mountain of average. And then it goes back down to high IQ. It's like your favorite character is Sora. And then it's like everyone else. And it just goes back to being Sora. So Sora is number two for me. And brain is number three. Brain is number three. Solely because of like his design. I think his design is amazing. Um, his implications. As well. I also hope that Zigbar keeps the guns. Just like Axel keeps the chakrams. Because I think Axel does like switch between Keyblade and chakrams. This castle of dreams. I feel like you can't really go wrong with a favorite character in Kingdom Hearts. They all have their own charm. Oh, you can. You can. Like, you, for example, if your favorite character is Yen Sid, you, you know, like, you might need to be, like, I don't know, checked out, you know? Like, you might have something wrong with you, like, I have a fever, maybe, or like, you know, I'll be coming down with something really, really serious. Like, I'd genuinely be worried about you if your favorite character is Yen Sid. Um, I've never heard anyone say that a Disney character is on their list of, like, favorites. I should have listened to what he had to say. Like, nobody says, like, Mickey's my favorite. Did you manage to locate Master Xehanort? No, but it seems he's looking for pure or like, you know, light. Merlin. Pure hearts. My favorite foreteller is probably Arva, All I can tell you is that his but Ira is a very close second for me as well. All right. I think Ira with the hair and, and the horn, know. pretty cool. Okay, the prince is in the ballroom ahead. He might have some answers. Thanks. Aqua. If Gula lived up to his um, sin name and was actually a pig, I'd love him. But, you know, everyone needs to be edgy and cool in Kingdom Hearts. You can't just be a fucking old pig boy. If, like, it would be so funny if, like, Gula was, like, this, like, little chubby pig boy. But, like, he's he still has, like, that lightning theme to him. Like, by lightning, I mean, like, that quick thunder, like element thing going on, you know? That'd be pretty funny. Be all right. You won't give into it. Okay. So this is Aqua. If you guys didn't know, Aqua is Latin for water. And it's and it's heavily implied that as a human being, uh Aqua is actually mostly comprised of water as a uh, organism so it really does check out um and also she she enjoys drinking lots of water too she definitely stays hydrated um hey chris my favorite character is snoopy snooper we've got the sticker here pence seeker of darkness oh i really miss the air dash i mean look at this Ugh, it's so ugly. Look how slow that is. Ugh. That's like two seconds of like straight delay. That's crazy. This is really cool and all, but can you turn off the game? No. Um. Also, Chris, I just ordered uh, a burger. And I'm waiting for it right now. It should be coming in like 15 minutes. So I'm excited to eat that. 
Um, did I miss anything here? No? Cool. What if aqua is mostly comprised of oil? Yeah, that's weird. However, I don't really recall asking. Oh shit, unburst. Unburst. What was like the community name back when like Birth by Sleep was just coming out and it was only in Japanese? Like people call like you know like how people call Brain Blaine. Poopy heads. That that's not I don't recall them being called poopy heads, Ikana. Um I think it was like Your Highness, I found this on the palace stairs. A glass slipper. One dropped by a lovely young lady. I think it was evil guys, really bad and not good men to fight, yeah. Maybe it was just like freaks, you know. How about that? Chris, who are your top three characters in Kingdom Hearts? In order. <laughs> I have a mod in Kingdom Hearts 3 that makes Pence replace the train in Twilight Town. There's just a giant Pence making his way around town. It's so funny. That's amazing. Lady Tremaine. Lady Tremaine is your number one favorite character. That's crazy. See, I, I don't really trust Chris in terms of Kingdom Hearts opinions, so it's fine. So I'm kind of already expecting the worst, but I, I don't know. Mm. But yeah, I can do like... One, two... Thunder, cancel that, finish, cancel that, uh, uh... Lizard. quick as I was expecting. Still pretty good though. I was into Kingdom Hearts since most of my teens, but was mostly unaware of Birth by Sleep for a very long time. Interesting. To be fair, I didn't get, um... I never, I've, I've never purchased Days. I've only, like, played it. I had a friend who had it. And I've never finished it. I really ought to pay Lady Tremaine a visit. Do you? Do you really? I'll say Master of Masters, Sody Pop Jones. Oh my goodness. Dude, Sody Pop Jones? Phew. Yeah, ever since Sody Pop Jones got revealed as one of the Lost Masters, I was like, yeah. Like, it just fits. Like. Okay, one second. I think my food is here. One second.
Okay, guys. I got it. Sobe Burger. See that? Gonna see what we have. We have... Cajun fries. And a cheeseburger. This? Ooh. Oh man. Look at this. Shoes. Seeing that? That looks pretty good. And I've got some Cajun fries here as well. Oh man. Seeing this? Come on, take a bite. That's pretty good. Okay, I need to try this burger. That is a, uh, that's a, that's a fucking burger. Hmm. As an acting exercise, can you please open up the bag of food? I'm looking at it as you're witnessing what's in the Epic Kingdom Hearts black box. Okay, sure. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's do this. Here we go. So here it is, right? I've got it. So here's me as as Lushu. Um witnessing um what's inside the black box. Or like, I don't know, Maleficent or something, because Lushu knows what's in the black. Anyway, shut up. Watch this, right? So this is black box. I'm Lucia. You ready? That's it. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Yeah, it's just a burger. Man, look at this. Pretty good. I've also just realized I've been streaming for an hour. For the first half an hour, I was just talking shit to people. I'm wondering what I'm going to get to eat. I'm in Castle of Dreams. I'm just eating. This is pretty good. Cajun fries as well. Yeah, I want to play Kingdom Hearts 4 even more now, for sure. Also, apologies to the YouTube crowd. 
I've been really looking forward to getting the, the restream chat sorted out. I don't know why it's so delayed. For Twitch, it is completely fine. I see it live just as how it's intended. But with YouTube, there's like a huge delay. So are the fries spicy? I think they're supposed to be. They're flavorful and they're very nice. But as I stated like earlier in the stream, I have a very, 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 very high spice tolerance. They're very, very good. They're very good. Um... Did you know Sunny spelt backwards is Enos? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, don't really recall asking though. But you know, um, everyone's kind of free to speak their mind, unless I don't want you to, in which case I'm going to permanently ban you or time you out. But you know, um, this is a safe environment for everyone, you know, talking about, you know, our favorite Kingdom Hearts characters, unless it's a character that I don't like, in which case you're permanently banned or you're going to get timed out. But, um, feel free to express, I like this one. Well, dangly one, you look at this. I think, honestly... My last meal would either be comprised of a chicken katsu curry or chicken tikka masala. Which aren't very spicy, but like, I just love that. Andy, how you doing? You could do a stream of you eating for three hours and I walk away satisfied. See you. That's what I want to hear. We are definitely playing Birth by Sleep, by the way. Because one of the B's in BBS stands for burger, so... I'm only here to watch you eat. When you start playing again, I'm leaving. Fair enough, I mean... Chris, have you tried this mod yet? It's really good. Like, if, if you guys aren't too happy with how Birth by Sleep plays as a video game, this, I think, honestly, changes so much. Like, because I, I do hear a lot of people saying, like, oh, I only play Birth by Sleep for the story. Like, I don't really enjoy playing it as a game. And I'm like, that's, you know, it's a shame, but that's fair. Um... If you have this mod, called the Better Battle System mod, it really does change a lot for the game. Cool. Big burger show, yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah Disney Town in BBS is terrible. Um, that might be the worst world in Kingdom Hearts. I don't know if that's a hot take. But like, when people think of the worst worlds, they think of like, I don't know, Hundred Acre Wood or um, Atlantis, or Atlantica, whatever it's called. Ohio. Uh, 
Um, but I think Disney Town, for what it is, yeah, Disney Town sucks. Like it, it just like the music is terrible, the aesthetic is terrible. It, it feels soulless. It feels like the amalgamation of every corporate soulless schlop that Disney is masquerading as, you know? Complete shit. But honestly, look, fishy fun. Not too bad. It's pretty bad, but you know. Deep jungle does suck. Deep jungle does suck. You mean Finny Fun? Yeah, yeah, Finny Fun. Whatever. I mean, you're clearly, obviously, a fan and you love that song. You sing it, you know, every day. Swim this way, we'll dance and we'll play. I think the reason why the song is bad is because it's obviously written from the ground up in Japanese and then translated to English as well. But like with that lo um, logic, it's like you know, Utada Hikaru still slaps, no matter in Japanese or in English. So it's like I think phonetically, I think is is the worst part. Because if you listen to, um, like, Japanese Disney songs, like, classics dubbed in Japanese, they just don't have the same kick to them. So, who knows, maybe Finny Fan is, like, absolute fire in Japanese. Young Professor Utonium, how you doing? Just watched the Your Nomine video. Last line made me tear up, fam. Good. You should have cried. Why didn't you cry? You should have said, um, ah, oh, that last line made me vomit, made me question my life decisions. Um, I moved out of my house. I sold the kids, took the wife. First video you've ever done made me move across the country. Yes. Say less. Say less. I mentioned that on Twitter earlier as well. Like, um, I have such a soft spot for my first video. Like, every now and again, I'll just look back at my old videos just to see, like, my headspace at the time. And, like, with that first video, because, like, no, no one knew who I was. Nobody knew who, what I looked like or anything like that. So, like... Listening back to like my voice, and you can like hear that like I have something to prove, and like you can see it in the video and the way it's structured, and like man, so wide eyed and bushy tailed, and now I'm like out here saying that I hate every single Kingdom Hearts character. Um, my wife cheated on me with Lushu and stuff like that, you know, it's crazy. Hey, where are you, kid? How's it going? Your first video made me really upset. Your second video made me really angry. And every video afterwards was honestly such a distressing experience. I am not a Sonny Nobut fan. Smile. Um. So Chris is like my biggest hater. And. Like. It makes me feel very tingly inside knowing that. Um. I'm causing him such pain and discomfort. Uh, and then we have Bioroxis, of course, right? It's like, speaking of like, you know. Anyway, whatever. 
Uh, hi, hi, how you doing, Bioxys? What's, what's going on, man? <laughs> um, I'm just eating my dinner. I am playing Birth by Sleep, don't worry. I'm almost finished with my Cajun fries, so... Um... What did I walk into? I was basically upset that, like, someone almost cried, but didn't. At my video. And, listen, if you're gonna tear up, look, listen. Fucking cry. Don't half ass it, go all the way. Okay? If you're gonna cry, I want you to weep, I want you to sob, I want you to vomit. Projectile vomit all over the screen. Why didn't you choose Ventus? I wanted to save him for last. Because I think he's going to be the most different and like the most affected out of this mod. What if your wife is, a, uh, is Lushu's next vessel? To be honest, I do want to see a female Lushu vessel. Also, if I were Master Xehanort, I wouldn't choose Terra. I mean, I understand why he did, because of, you know, the darkness, but, you know. Yeah, exactly. If we aren't white water rafting in tears, it's futile. Yeah. But no, I, I am happy with the uh, Namine video. Um, I'm just excited to kind of work on other stuff as well. Um, actually, speaking of Terra, I want to do a Terra video. But like, there's, there's already a bunch of videos online saying that, like, um, you know, Terra's not dumb. And it's like, I don't want to just do that again, like, make a 30-minute video explaining why Terra isn't stupid. But, like, um, I mean, I could if I just word it differently. Was your video an analysis or theory? Felt more like a character study. With um, the nominee video, yeah. It's why it wasn't titled, like, a Kingdom Hearts theory. It was titled the Kingdom Hearts character piece. I think it was more so, like, a critique on, on um, um, shonen storytelling in video games. It was a critique on nominee's omittance from the story as of late. Um, despite the fact... She's so important. Okay, Umbra. The f with the wall. I'm kidding, it's okay. I, I love reading things. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, I, I kind of want to dabble more into that. Like, less with theories. And also more to do with, like... Um, just, like, deconstructing characters. And I think, like, the Lucia video that I teased is going to be... A mix between like what I think he's doing, um, how I think he's the traitor, but also like a deconstruction on immortality on the human mind and how it affects you and um, questioning whether really like Lushu is the same boy he once was in a different body or if he is completely transformed as a soul, as a human being or whatever he is. We don't even know if he's human. We have no idea. There's some like really weird semantics in the dialogue between Lushu and the Master of Masters that suggests that like Lushu is a bit weird. Like he kind of jokes about like Lushu having more in common with darkness than he thinks. And it's like, yeah, you know, the Master of Masters is kidding, but like, you know, 
we've had things like that happen in the series before, where like characters say something offhanded and it ends up being like important. And it's like, let's just say, for example, hypothetically, that Lu Xu was a doppelganger of Brain. I'm actually going to go on a limb and say Brain is the original. So Lu Xu is more actually a doppelganger of, you know, of him rather than vice versa. Because I can't see the ancestor of Ericus being a clone of someone else. It's a bit weird. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's not like... The whole go uh, doppelganger thing, like... Some days I side with it, some days I don't. Yeah, I don't want to go down the charity thing again. Like, I, I, I really don't. Um, we know the foretellers have charities themselves. Does, does that mean Lucio has a charity as well? I mean, like, that's, like, do we see specifically the charities of the foretellers? Like, I know the Master of Masters says, like, everyone in the unions will get one of these little guys, but, like, do we see, like, specifically, like, an era charity or, like, an asset charity? Because, like, El Reina has a charity, we know, obviously. But we don't really see, um, Lorium's charity, do we? I could be wrong. Like, I, I, like, I wasn't really watching for how many charities we see, but... It is very, very peculiar that Player is the only character with t two charities. Um, I just realized I've just completely skipped over Umbra's thing. Hold on. Uh, Umbra says, haven't seen the video yet because I was busy that night and I'm also uh, waiting for a day where my brain is capable of paying attention and focusing on things so I can absorb the video better. That being said, though, I did overhear someone say you were talking about how Naman doesn't need a Keyblade based. Yeah. Um, I don't think Naman needs a Keyblade. Loads of characters. Like, Zigbar doesn't need a Keyblade. Him being Lushu only adds to how amazing Zigbar actually is as a character. It doesn't really make or break him. Him being Lucio or not. But him, him having no name is really cool. But like, Axel, completely fine with him just having chakrams. Him getting a Keyblade, he didn't really need one. The only reason why he got a Keyblade is because he was a fan favorite and people loved him so much. Really is the only reason. Really is. And it leads me to believe that if a bunch of random key kids can have Keyblades, and, like, it's implied that maybe somewhere in this new saga, maybe in the climax, all of the Dream Eaters are gonna, like, awaken and the key kids are gonna have a new lease at life. Um, it makes me think that Haina is going to get a Keyblade, and maybe like Pence and Olette as well. It wouldn't, it really, really wouldn't surprise me. And people are like, haha, that's funny. It's like, you know, Haina can fight. You know? And if certain characters can get Keyblades just like that, Haina definitely deserves one, I think. At least Haina. He can kick, that is a very good point. And the kick is really good. Lee got a Keyblade as, uh, for a joke, which was funny, sure, but really weird in the scope of it. Um, I think Lee getting a Keyblade was like the final straw that broke the camel's back in terms of like who can get a Keyblade and who can't. Like. At first, we thought that, like, yeah, a bunch of characters have Keyblades, but it's, like, more of, like, this cosmic selection, like, you need to be related to this character, or something needs to happen here, blah, blah, blah. But, like, with Axel training for, like, God knows how long, with Yen Sid, who doesn't even have a Keyblade, and he can just materialize one, it's like, yeah, I mean, like, if the story wants you to have a Keyblade, you can have a Keyblade. Doesn't really matter. So I think Haina, for him to be more important in the series, I think Haina is going to get a Keyblade at least. I, I, like, I, I bet money on that. I think Haina is going to get a Keyblade. 
Olet or Pence, I don't know, but like I think Hayna will get a Keyblade. Demote Umbra and give me the roll. After hours, what time is it for you? <laughs> if Roxas ever got another game somehow, a party of Roxas, Leon, Leon, Sh Lee, Lee, Shion, Isa, and Hayna would be wild. Yeah, the Twilight Gang are kind of busted right now. I mean, Roxas and Shion are so busted. Like, honestly. I think Roxas and Shion are going to tag team a foreteller. The only question is what foreteller? I'm going to say Era because of the mansion and the unicorn thing. That would be pretty crazy. That would be pretty crazy, right? Four thirty a.m. You know what? Fuck sleep. Who needs sleep? It's fine. Just watch Sunny Novus eat some Asian fries. Truly, uh, yeah, living up to your name after hours. That was pretty funny. Okay, so I'm finished with my food. Stay hydrated. So this is a uh, Birth by Sleep. This is a video game released on the um, Nintendo Vita back in 1994. Huh, 
she can't jump cancel, but Chara could. Cool. Cool. I don't think there's anything crazy that we need to worry about over here. Just fighting these guys. Does anyone have like a favorite unversed design? Because they are very underrated, because they only show up in one game before Kingdom Hearts 3. And in Kingdom Hearts 3, they are kind of overshadowed. Like, yeah, they are part of like Monstropolis and Keyblade Graveyard, but like. Just like the basic ones. And I'm not really a fan of the ones in Monstropolis, I'm not gonna lie. Out of curiosity, where would Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep rank on your top Kingdom Hearts games with this mod? With this mod? That is a good question. Good question. Definitely top five. Even with this mod, it's not as good as, you know. Can I get that? I can get that, I think. Woo! -wee! Nice. Um... Because, like, structurally, as a game, it can't really hold a candle to, like, 1, 2, and 3. But, if we're on, like, the rank of, like, side games... Do you know what? I really like Dream Drop Distance, but only the HD remaster. On the 3DS, game's complete dog shit. Um, but I replayed it again last year, and I was like, oh, it's pretty good. But with this mod? Hmm. I think it's on the same level as Dream Drop Distance. But I only say that because, like, I know people really don't fuck with that game for some reason. Well, the reflect cancel is so cool. Like, oh, ow. Pretty cool. Um, if Recom allowed us to explore the castle to get to Disney World, so like Mario 64, that is an amazing idea! Yeah, imagine if like the castle was like its own like world, and not just like hallways and rooms, like, that would be amazing! Uh, I will say that like, I would like to play a Reach of Memories, but like in the style of a Kingdom Hearts 1 game without the card system, because, like, yeah. Really, I think that system just kind of holds it back from being a lot higher on people's lists, but...
I think my favorite on verse is Symphony Master. Oh, the boss in this world? Or the other world? The uh, Sleeping Beauty world. Outside of that, I'd just say regular Flood. Flood is probably my favorite basic enemy in the series. That's fair. I'm still conflicted in training memories, in my opinion. Like, I like the card combat, it's fun once you figure it out, but the traversal of the world's levels is so dull and boring to me. Yeah, like, I think, like, a lot of these side games, it's not so much the gameplay that holds it back, it's like the world design. But with Birth by Sleep, I actually think it's the other way around. It's less to do with the gameplay and more to do with, like, the structure with a lot of these games, but with Birth by Sleep, it's like... The gameplay really, it, it is such a shame that bosses are pretty terribly designed, because like, there is something here, and this mod definitely showcases that, like, if this game just had a little bit more ca care and like, time in the oven, you could do stuff like that, and it's like, it's so tiny just being able to cancel certain animations, but like, it does so much. Yeah, Dream Drop Distance, I think, is like... I think people remember it from the 3DS, and it was pretty bad. But, I don't know, like, I, I played it on the PS4, and I was like, this is really good. Bubble! Oh, okay, so I just got punched up and fucking died. Nice! It's my favourite thing to do. It's like, we have the finish command, but like, what if I don't want to use the finish command? Like, why is it on the attack button? Like, why can't it just be on, like, circle or something? Or like, R1 or L1 or something, you know? Then again, I think PSP only had L and R, right? But no, it had like the back face buttons, right? I think my favorite unversed are the big guys, like the equivalent of fat bodies, maybe. Does Vinita's Remnant count as an unversed? I think it does, right? Because it has like the sigil. Yeah. These guys are my least favorite. Yeah, these guys. I like these guys, but only the originals. I don't like, like the red ones. Iframes. Yes, sir. Cool. 
Yeah, she's already much harder than Terra. Like. Pretty cool. everything in this room? No? I wonder if it was intentional to make Aqua feel stronger than Terra at the beginning of the game because like she is the master. That'd be interesting. Tremaine. Oh, you can't go into first person view in this mod, I don't know why. It's because of the camera. So this camera, uh, this game does have a uh, adjusted camera. They can do stuff like this. So the camera is more like akin to Kingdom Hearts 2 than it is Kingdom Hearts 1, like the original BBS. Ah! Oh! Imagine if I died, I'd actually quit the game. Oh, risque. Okay. <clears throat> Gonna save the game. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. You know, I've never seen this movie. <laughs> never actually seen this movie. Uh, do we have. Anything cool that we can use? Poison. Is that good? Is poison good? It might not be good. Sleep seems pretty cool. Slow seems pretty cool too. It all seems pretty cool. I'm gonna get poison. Poison sucks. He kind of said poison sucks, so I'm gonna get poison. Uh, I only have 173. Can we sell anything? Gotta go sleep absolutely after hours. I guess it isn't after hours anymore, it is those hours. It, it is real sleep hours right now, so... Uh... Cool, cool. Barrier Surge, I have Barrier Surge, I can get that. Um... I'm gonna sell slow. I had poison, man! I need to check my inventory before I buy something. It's annoying. Uh... Items... No, it would be... Command X. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, Blizzard and Thunder are pretty good. Quick Blitz. Barrier Surge is pretty good. I'm gonna get rid of... Blizzard for Barrier Surge. Oh yeah, no problem, after hours. So much of us in the community are still like really underrated. I think, like. But also making quality videos takes time, you know? So like, a lot of people say like, ah, oh, you'd be so much bigger if you just uploaded twice a week. And I'm like, yeah, imagine uploading brain teaser twice a week. It's like, nah, come on, man. Don't trick me. Nice. Magic recipe. A recipe that makes magic. Cool. Okay, let me into your lot. Let me into your yard. You honor our 
humble home, my lord. My lord. <clears throat> Quite so. May I present my daughters, Drizella and Anastasia? She's called Drizella? That's Anastasia. fucked up. There is darkness here. Yeah, it's Drizella. <laughs> that name is Darkness Incarnate. Cinderella's fairy godmother. I appear to those who believe the dreams come true. Then I'm honored. But why would you advise me not to fight darkness with light? Strong rays of sun create dark shadows. Aqua is ready to go murder them, yeah. To remain and both her daughters are jealous of Cinderella's charm and beauty. Qualities that appear to you as light. Jealousy is darkness. Light and dark go hand in hand. Ugh. You can't have one without the other. Then, what should I do? It's quite simple, dear. One of Cinderella's friends is trying very hard to keep her light from fading. I want you to get is it Jacques? Her and help yeah. him. I can do that. You'll need a bit of my magic to help, Jacques. Come back and see me when you're ready. Yeah, Ericus is a beast. Absolute monster of a human being. I I need to fight um the uh the armor like like the secret bosses. I actually kind of want to do fight the secret bosses in uh, this mod. But do you have to f beat the game with all three characters to unlock that? Or like get all the reports or whatever? Because I'm beating all these uh, stories on proud mode. Uh, I'm good. Yes, yes, please send me in. Uh, motherfucker too. Yeah, I want to fight the motherfucker. Probably can't beat him, but like, I, do I actually want to fight him though? Because like, it wouldn't be any different. Like me being able to cancel the X button into a guard doesn't really change the fact that you need to just thunder surge him and dodge roll him to death. Like. So maybe not him, but like, maybe other characters. Like, no heart. Damn, Jacques a Keyblade wielder? Nice. Ven Ven? I'm Aqua. But tell me how you know about Ven. As a friend, good friend. Ven Ven help a jack fix a splendor belly to less. And where is he now? Look up a friend. Other friend. I see. Ven, you Benita's remnant might only be main story individually. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, barrier surge, definitely the one. Cause like she lacks crazy mobility, I think. Being able to like dodge roll out of a barrier surge is pretty good. Oh, he's getting fucked up? Nice. Damn. Spellweaver is pretty trash. I mean, this is really good, but... The actual, like, combo is pretty bad. Mm. 
Can I, like, unequip this? And then Thunderbolt. That's pretty good. You're the only ladies here? There's no one else, Your Grace. Come on, hurry, Jack. Uh. Oh shit. Who would win in a fight? Tiny Aqua or Tinkerbell? Oh, would it uh, would it be all right if I tried on the glass slipper? She's just inside the house and they're just kind of looking at her. <laughs> What? That's terrible. I am a girl. I should at least be given a chance to try it on. Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? It's just Maleficent. Like, it's crazy how she's just Maleficent. That girl does not live here. Isn't that crazy? Like... I believe we're finished here, Your Grace. There's just no, like, excuse. There's just no getting around it. It's just, like, human Maleficent. Crazy. He says every maiden, but doesn't let Aqua try it on. That's pretty fucked up. I actually want to thank you for teaching Tara he needs to keep believing. Oh? Oh? Damn. <laughs> That's fucked up. What will I do? That's sick. That's more powerful than any attack Maleficent has ever done. You see, That's crazy. Damn! That was awkward. Yeah, Birth by Sleep was kind of like bad with like the really, really awkward pauses and silence, I think. A perfect fit. I must inform the yeah, Aqua just walked out of frame backwards. Find the heart's joint to yours. Just walks away. Scullery maid? Oh shit. Throw hands. Put in her place? Like I put Peter Pan in his place? I remember doing this when the game first came out and it just reminded me like I miss the feeling of a new Kingdom Hearts game. I really do. Like it's so crazy because like Dark Road didn't feel like a new Kingdom Hearts game and Missing Link doesn't even feel like a new Kingdom Hearts game. Because like I can't imagine myself having fun playing Missing Link, you know what I mean? Unless they are, you know, gonna give me a code for the beta in which, you know, I will happily say that Missing Link is the best game of all time. Atari, how are you doing? Introduce your content with your collab, collab with Landy? Nice. This is what happened. 
happens when you go against my wishes. The darkness in their hearts overtook them. Yeah, I think the Android beta is happening soonish. I think what it's like July or August or something, right? Or maybe it is April or May. I think it's May. I thought I was on Quick Blitz, but it just kind of moved me over in the command deck. I'm, I'm excited for the story of Missing Link, but like, I am a bit apprehensive as to how it's going to be structured and, you know, I don't expect us to get the entire game in one sitting, like, I expect us to get it in a few updates, but like, I don't want it to last for like five years, you know what I mean? Like, people think that Missing Link could last for the entirety of the Lost Masters arc, and I'm like, oh, I hope not, I really hope not. Just let Missing Link be done with before Kingdom Hearts 4, please. At least. A pure heart filled with light? It's strange. The Master taught me darkness needs to be destroyed. But how? If not with light? But also when Birth by Sleep came out, I remember, like, I didn't really grow up with, like, the internet or a computer or anything like that, so I had no idea what these characters were or what they were doing. Like, I'd seen things on YouTube when I go to my friend's house or whatever. Um, like, you know, the old Jump Festa trailers with, like, the weird effect around the video border because, you know, it was in standard definition. So, like had this like weird cube translucent effect um but like i miss that feeling of like just watching cutscenes as they're coming you know I'm not going to shit talk Willa Holland because I'm sure she's a terrific actress, but um, I don't know if it was just like the way she was directed, but like, yeah, voice acting and other forms of acting are very, very different, evidently. Some people have a knack for it. And it's funny, but like, that's why so many uh, Kingdom Hearts voice actors are also singers, just like Jesse McCartney, because like, you can't really, you can be a talented actor, but like, Voice acting and mic technique and focusing everything on speech alone is very, very different. 
Whereas I imagine like camera actors and TV actors, they put so much emphasis emphasis on their face and like those micro expressions that like maybe their voice isn't really um what's the word I'm looking for? Prioritized, I guess. What has happened here? Oh snow white. So fun fact about the seven dwarfs in this game, uh, if you guys didn't know, uh, these are all um, ancestors of Master Xehanort, uh, which is why uh, they look so much like him, with the eyes and the, the lack of hair. So uh, they actually used Master Xehanort's model, scaled it down, retextured a few things, and uh, they made the dwarfs. So, uh, From what you've said, she must have been very loved. But how did this happen to her? A wicked queen was horribly jealous of our dear Snow White's beauty. Godlike track, by the way. She used her evil magic to change into an old hag. Then she gave Snow White a poison apple. And by the time we got here, well, it was yeah, I I definitely hear that, Ikana. It's just that like I've been really hard on some of the voice work in Kingdom Hearts as well, but like. Also, I, I do think a lot of it is because cutscenes are structured in a weird way, and the jump between Japanese to English, and um, maybe direction. I think a lot of direction is, is really, really weird. Because Jason Doring is also sometimes really good as Terra, and then sometimes a bit weird. But Jesse McCartney is amazing. Like, the Disney kids are amazing, you know? The pop stars and all the all those people, they're always really good. Oh shit. Really cool. Yeah. Also, imagine just like voicing a few lines in this PSP game and then coming back to do like Kingdom Hearts 3 where you're saying a bunch of words and names that you have no idea what's going on. Like, I imagine I'd love to see like a Kingdom Hearts BTS behind the scenes like thing where like they're being directed and they're like, what the fuck is a Xenohort? No, this is a Xehanort. Zeh Zehanot. No, it's Zehanot. Like, I'd love to see that. <laughs> Payback surge. I think we have a new space. Uh, we're gonna do poison. Try a poison. Hmm. Ruh. I want to get this axe. Even if uh, Missing Link is broken into parts slash updates, I'll be excited for fan theory to see if someone can predict the plot somewhat. Yeah, I think like, I'm just excited for the lore, really. Jason, when he shouts as Terra, is really, really good. And honestly, I think that's why he got cast, in my opinion. Because I imagine, like, with the auditions, they, like, did some emotional scenes, some funny scenes, some sad scenes, and then some angry fight scenes. And I think based on those fight scenes, or, like, those, like, Xehanort... I'm, like, I'm thoroughly convinced that Terra's fight with Xehanort, in the end, was part of the audition, I think. And when he's like, you know, doing like the Dragon Ball Z key charge. Oh, hello. Oh, 
but sometimes when speaking it's like a little bit flat here and there but you know it happens potion This is way better than the Spellweaver. Way better. There we go. Ah, poison's pretty good. I think in this um mod with poison, because you can cancel it. I think poison's pretty good. Yeah, see? Just automatically activate poison, cancel it, and it's just like continue a combo. Pretty good. Hmm. Pretty cool. these birds. Oh. Would have been nice if this mod like adjusted the damage scaling, the health values and stuff, because like it feels weird doing chip damage. Like look at this. Search, please. My potion. Yeah, Birth by Sleep is just inherently terrible with chip damage. Uh, I am playing on this, like, budget um, DualShock clone with a wire. It's pretty cool. Poison killed him. Uh, I think for the most part, the series has had trouble with how they make their scenes. Kingdom Hearts 3 was such a great jump on that. I'll never forget Jeff Bridges in the grid saying, staying silent to raise up his arms and then Back down for like 20 seconds of silence, yeah. It's like, they, they want to keep the integrity of like the original movie and the scenes from those movies, but like sometimes it just doesn't work. It's like, oh, remember this scene in the movie? It's like, no. I wonder if there are any other, like, options I can tweak in this mod. Like, changing damage scaling would work really well. Like, obviously Aqua's supposed to be more magic-oriented than, um, 
strength, but like... Oh god. Mm. Anything here? No? Payback surge. Then. Um... Pretty decent. At least PBS doesn't have a zillion health bars on enemies and especially bosses like Daze and Dream Drop Distance did. Yeah, I guess so. Pop back in once I'm home. Cool, cool, cool. See you then. Also... I think we're all good. How have you guys been today? Not for anything special this week. Is something wrong? Who's this clown? It's different somehow. And I can't find the princess or hear her beautiful voice. Jeez. Was it all a dream? Wait. You mean you know Snow White? Oh yeah. <coughs> we met her. It was a song. A yeah, I think so. Especially because like Yazora. Magia and Aegis, like, like, the play on Sword Shield and stuff. The wicked queen tricked her into eating the poisoned apple. I must go to her. Where is she? In the woods, guarded by seven kind dwarves. I will find her. Perhaps there's a way I can help. <clears throat> Who the fuck is messaging me? Hold on. Anyway, video game time. Can I get this chest up here? I think I need to like dash or something, like barrier surge maybe. As for special stuff today, tested out proper spaghetti sauce instead of a simple meat sauce. Nice. Do you have to get all the stickers to unlock like the secret bosses in this game. Okay, let me see if I can, like... Do I need, like, high jump? Does Aqua get an air dash? Fuck. Ah, oh, I wish you could, like, grab onto the ledge. That'd be pretty cool. Can I, like, regain stuff? No. How do you picture Kingdom Hearts 4 starting out, like the uh, introduction sequence? Like, is it going to be with Strelitzia? And she's going to guide us through, like, Quadratum and stuff like that? Or is it going to be, like, Sora fighting that huge dark side? Because, like, I don't think that's going to be in the final game, if I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, so, I'm going to do this. Ah, oh, so close. Okay. Hit. 
best platformer. There we go. You think Teen, Emid, and Ludo will be in Missing Link? I wouldn't be surprised if Luxord was in Missing Link. People think that, like, Luxord is actually so good, you know? But, like, I don't know. Um, I personally think Demix is going to be... I do think he is a Quadratum native, currently. But I don't think he's, like, the Prompto thing that I mentioned in my first video. I don't think that anymore. Um, I actually think he... I think his somebody could be like an evil person, like a terrible person. Vision Fire Argo. And if Quadratum, meaning four, means that there are like four major cities in Unreality, and Quadratum's just one of four, and Yazora is the commander slash prince of Quadratum, then maybe. Demix is somebody is like the prince of another sector of unreality. And there are like four different like, you know. Places. But Quadratum kind of sounds like there are like... Quadratum is like the main, like, four, you know. But if Quadratum is supposed to mirror Insomnia, you know. <clears throat> I also feel like the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer was a fake trailer, just like the gameplay trailer. Yeah, exactly. With Kingdom Hearts 3, it's like Sora was fighting the Demon Tide in um, Twilight Town, but it was very, very, very different. And we do fight Twilight uh, Demon Tide in Twilight Town in Kingdom Hearts 3, but like, it was very different. Also, like, why is there a well here and we can't go down the well? That's just bad game design. Come on. If there is a well in a video game, you need to be able to go down it. If there's a waterfall in a video game, there needs to be a secret behind it. You know, this is like common stuff here, guys. Come on. Video game 101 here. Uh, do you think I could barrier surge up there? Probably. Come on. I need to get like height. Could I like barrier surge up there and then like grab the ledge maybe? No. What if we have a cage 2 star on the shoes of someone else until Sora wakes up? Yeah, uh, a lot of people th seem to think that we're going to start the game as Yuzora's real body, and then we end the game when he like turns into the Yuzora that we fight in Kingdom Hearts um, 3. Because that's not his true form, right? And like we're going to be playing the game that Rex was playing, and like the Bahamut boss and stuff like that that he was referencing. That'd be pretty cool.
love this detail of the skeletons down here. They look pretty cartoony, but still, like, dead bodies in Kingdom Hearts, you know. The remains of humans. Yeah, like, if you notice, the dark side doesn't have any attacking animations till the punch moment. It's all simple animation done through camera tracking. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, a showcase. And I think, like, I read somewhere that they only announced Kingdom Hearts 4 because they were super duper afraid that it was going to get leaked. And they're just like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to, you know, here's the trailer. That wouldn't surprise me if, like, Sora says something when he wakes up to Strelitzia, like, I had a dream where, like, you know, I was fighting a bunch of, like, characters. Like, I, I, I fought this, uh, blonde boy in a green tunic or some shit, you know what I mean? Like, and Cloud was there. Um, am I missing something? I am. Gotta go back down, don't I? That's fine. All that for a fire? Nice. Um, why is my X button not working? Okay, cool. Wasn't working for a second. Okay, I can get over there, but how? Yeah, here we go. Nice. Magnet. That's pretty good. I might equip that. Deal continual damage. That might be better than poison. We'll try it. Well, barrier surge comes back and go over there. Oh, you just... okay. Great. Who cares? <laughs> just automatically locked onto this thing. It would be nice if the magnet wouldn't send them in the air. Like, I've noticed that about Birth by Sleep. There's like a lot of power-ups that just send them in the air, but like, why? Like, aerial combat is not really a thing in Birth by Sleep. Looks cool though. Anyway.
Okay, I'm not already found a magnet. Also, Aqua's aerial spiral is really weird. Not really fun. Probably not Fragmentary Passage, because this is um, a mod. This is the better battle system mod. But uh, yeah, fra Fragmentary Passage, I just don't find very fun. Speaking of, the mirror. Banger song. Oh, what the hell? Okay, so... Okay, look for the smiley face. No smiley face. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a VA jump scare. I'm really interested to see what Aqua can teach Kyrie. And they pressed their JPEGs together in the face. Princess! <laughs> it's 
just like a miracle. And then depression. Then sadness happened. She was sleeping. I remember Ven sleeping. Ventus, why won't you wake up? When was this? When did this take place? Oh, when he. Okay. You're awake, Ventus. Oh, a miracle. He's very attached to him immediately. that takes place after he has that hissy fit and dies. <clears throat> this guy. I hate this guy. <laughs> Forged a D-Link with Snow White. Okay. I can save her. I am gonna stretch my legs for like a minute or two. You guys should probably do the same. Uh, neutral. Oh man. <sighs> right, see you in five minutes.
Guess who's back? Mm, wrong one, there we go. Okay, so I think I'm gonna beat Enchanted Dominion, and then we'll do something else. We can discuss what we're gonna do. I did briefly suggest that yesterday, um, I, I suggested that we should do like a tier list of like a hypothetical Kingdom Hearts game, a fighting game. Like who would be on the roster, who would be top tier and bottom tier. <clears throat> but who knows. I remember if I ever showed you the other bust statue I made on 3D printer like last year. What? Um, it's a 404. It's an error. I can't see it. If you want, you can post it in the um, Discord. Hmm. Where am I? Boom, 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 boom. Anyway, Enchanted Dominion. Stop listening to this loop. It is really interesting that Lorium and Mandalorian wake up in Wharf Woodlands and Enchanted Dominion, which are worlds in Birth by Sleep, even though they don't appear in this game. Like, couldn't they have just appeared in, like, you know, other worlds as well, like Agrabah or, or whatever? Like... Hello? So she wakes up, like, here, right? Like, somewhere here? Or is it, like, back here? It might be back here. You posted it in art? Let me have a look. Uh-oh. Escape. Okay. I am locked inside the application. I have no idea how to get out. Windows. There we go. <clears throat> You made that on a- holy shit! You made that on a 3D printer? Can I show that on stream? That's insane. Boom, 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 boom. That's insane. Look at that. That's crazy, right? Oh. 
Like the like even the detail in the thing and the color as well. I love the uh, material. That's so crazy because like I wanted to do something similar like this with my Lushu video, like making this bit in like Blender. That's pretty crazy. Oh, that's so cool. I guess we can't go back here, right? Yeah. Uh-oh, who are these guys? <laughs> I like these guys. <laughs> Pretty cool. What's that guy doing? Oh, he just... Oh, okay. Kind of chilling over there. They do a lot of damage, really? Interesting. I guess I'll never find out. Hey guys, how's it going? Come on. Ow. Damn, that was a lot, a lot of damage. Um, Bubble Blaster level 4, nice. We do have an extra spot, we do. Definitely gonna use that. Yeah, Aqua without high jump. Does she have an Surely we do have something, right? We can also do uh, items. Yeah, nice. Girl, you're like six eight. I think she's like give or take like five seven, maybe. <laughs> Don't 
You may have overshot her height. Yeah, six for eight is like more like the Master of Masters. Even like he's not that. I, I think Master of Masters is like six foot five or some shit. He's massive. Terra's like five ten, five eleven, I think. I'm sure you'll agree, Ventus. Aqua. <laughs> Terra's not that tall. I'm taller than Terra. The master sent me. Huh? Then let's go home. But Terra. Terra's not ready to leave yet. Yeah, Yuzora's ridiculous. Yuzora's like six four. To the point where it feels like a model in like, like a scaling issue or some shit. But it might be like an unreality thing, like maybe like video game unreal characters are really weird. Which is why the Master of Masters might be really tall. Because he might be from like another universe or some shit. How do you know about the Keyblade? A source of power. A key that opens the hearts of men, of entire worlds, and allows one to obtain anything and everything. Such a power I find most fascinating. He really? Yes. Now, my dear, would you like to assist me as well? Never! I see. Xehanort was right. You are a most stubborn girl. Master Xehanort, how do you... It seems you need time to consider my offer. Terra, Xemnas, Era, Asset, I always assumed to be the tallest. Um, they look, they definitely look taller, like, even Sora in Kingdom Hearts 2 looks like he should be quite lanky, but he's not. Sora's tiny. He's ridiculously small. I didn't realise he was like 5 foot 2. Riku's pretty tall. Riku's like barely sh shorter. Uh, no, no, Riku's not. He's, I think he's like, taller than like... Sora, obviously, but he's nowhere near as tall as like Terra. Me from breaking her evil curse. I was to meet the most beautiful girl at a cottage in the Terra's like I think 511. Maybe, I think. We have like the heights somewhere. But uh Master of Masters is taller than I said and Era. I think the Master of Masters is the tallest original character that we have so far. And of course, Xemnas and Terra are going to be the same height because they are the same body. So, Xemnas is 511. Damo's fucking huge as well. They, Damo's like 6'3 or 6'4, right? Apparently. <laughs> Yen Sid when he's not sitting down. That's a different character. I'm actually convinced that Yen Sid sitting down and Yen Sid standing up are two different characters. That's my next theory. <laughs> That's my next theory. There's Yen Sid and then there's Sid Yen. I think Yen Sid sitting down is roughly the same height as Sora standing up, but the hat may help him. You know. Um, what if I did like... Hold on. Yeah, see? That's what I'm talking about. Ice Barrage. See, we're gaming right now. Every scene of Master of Masters talking to Ava is hilarious. 
Yeah, it's insane. Arva, like, barely scrapes his hips. It's crazy. Like, she's breaking her neck looking up to him. I think Arva's, like, five foot. Like, same height as, like, Chain of Memories nominee or some shit. But yeah, Destiny Trio are quite short. Oh, hello. What? You guys seeing this? Invisible enemies? Shooting at me from across the yard? That's crazy. Yes, mysterious figure, he's here. What? Okay, come here. Surprise, motherfucker. Another side, motherfucker. Ah, I can't. It's, it's glitched. I can't press the X button. Poison. So that might be a bug in this mod, where like, if you use a certain command at a certain time, your X button gets... funkied out. <clears throat> okay, give me this, please. I push it. Look at this guy. Heal. Imagine playable Maleficent. That would be nuts. Is is Mickey Mouse the only playable Disney character in Kingdom Hearts? I mean, technically, like we can ride Dumbo. So, like, are we controlling Dumbo, or is? Are we controlling Sora controlling Dumbo? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's only the goofy in days. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at you. Fucking Kingdom Hearts fan over here. Can we get up here? Okay, how about this? Oh, you... If, mods permanently ban... Me. Fuck's sake. Permanently ban Aqua. Oh, you... Are silly goose. Imagine liking Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it's a shame like that happens to some people. Like, okay, I want to like swipe it. That's what I want to do. But I need to get like an angle, right? Um, so like, I'm gonna go over here. Hmm. This maybe. Okay, not big enough. Did I come from down here? I think I did. I did. Um. Cool. How many was like nine year old high? I mean, five foot is not very tall. She's probably like four foot ten. Probably. I mean, she's definitely shorter than Sora, and Sora's like five foot, five foot one, five foot two, maybe. I don't know how tall he is in Chain of Memories. Take on Maleficent's goons! I want to play as Prince Charming. Come on. I actually, kind of want to watch him. Already has better frame. He has way better frame data than Terra. He has a guard. Nice finisher. One, two, three hit combo. I think that's all he has. Oh, he's dead. Nice. I can't cure him, can I? This is Prince Philip. Prince Charming is Snow White one. You're acting as if I've seen these fucking movies. I mean, again, we've already established that Lady Tremaine is just Maleficent, so, you know. 
Prince Philip, Prince Charming. Prince Charming is Cinderella, Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. You have a Disney fan in the chat, oh god. To be fair, I only- I'm a huge fan of, like, Renaissance Disney. Anything before that, I don't really give a fuck. Um... I've also never seen Cinderella, by the way. I just mentioned that, like, earlier. Cool room. What's in here? Sure. Yeah, I grew up on, like, you know, Lion King and, and like, Hunchback, stuff like that. I don't give a fuck about anything from the before time. Uh, where are we going? Lexius, when he wasn't leaning from his hammer. And Zaldin were tall and buff. Yeah. They were tall. Oh, so when I get hit, I can't attack. Nice. That's great. And then I can, because I've used a command. Weird. Hidden mechanic. Maleficent's goons relinquish your ability to attack. Ow. Cinderella is easily the best of the classic princesses. Yeah, I guess so. Ooh. Just looking at the, the carpet, the rug. PJ, I'm trying to think, is the Master of Masters the tallest original Kingdom Hearts character that we have so far? Like in terms of like, actual humans. Or, well, whatever the fuck he is. Yeah, he is. Because I know he's taller than Ased, and Ased's pretty tall, and I'm assuming Ased's, like, taller than Terra. And, like, you know, other characters. Yeah, he's huge, right? He's, like, 6'6". Six, six. Put it this way, like, if you guys see the young Xehanort and Master of Masters cutscene, and when the Master of Masters is sitting down, like, he, he's the size of the fucking rock he's sitting on, basically. He's massive. But Yazora is so oddly tall as well, it's really jarring. Let me play as Philip. Fucking Prince Philip. God. My country's a joke. <laughs> Prince Philip. That's funny. Mum is three darklings in trench coat. That's pretty funny. My ex was six eight. Jesus. Six eight. The tallest person I've seen. I was working at a Tesco's when I was like twenty, I think. Um, oh yeah, he's telling me to do something. Oh, press X, which is square, because this is... That was pretty cool. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I was working at a supermarket called Tesco's when I was like 20. And this guy came in, and he was taller than the aisles. So I'm talking like 7 feet, at least. He was, like, massive, but he was also, like, um, he had, like, mobility issues as well. So, like, I assume it was, like, you know, obviously a birth thing, but, like, it was fucking great. He was really, really ridiculously tall.
You good? Philip? Can I push him through here? Can we like break the game? What is Philip doing? We have to go over here. Do this, cool. You're fairly tall, right? You don't particularly give off short energy. Fuck off! Cure, please. Thank you. Oh, I can guard Philip. Cool. I love that in Kingdom Hearts. We can just, like, teleport to someone and guard for them. It's fucking sick. Pulling off the Riku. Ow. What are your favorite Disney movies? Bang. Does Philip do this? In, do, uh, does Philip do this in the movie? Like just ransack Maleficent's castle and just destroy all the pigs? Yeah, he does. I jump. Let's go. I'm also very scared because, like, I just realized I'm older than Marluxia. I am older than a final boss of a Kingdom Hearts game. And soon enough, I'm gonna be like Xemnas' age, which is, like, pretty scary. Just on the topic of height, as well as age. Like, I'm taller than Xemnas, which is pretty cool, but, like, I'm gonna be as old as him soon as well, so I'm like, oh god. I think Marluxia is at most 26. Like, at most. If, like, Lorium is, like, 16 and Birth by Sleep to Kingdom Hearts 1 slash 2, he's, like, 25 or 26. I think, like, Lark's scene is probably, like, 24, maybe. I'm gonna say. It's not old, but I'm just saying. It's just weird, like... Trust me, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, by the... When you're 30, you're going to be having a walking stick, you know, it's like... That's such like a 20-year-old mindset, you know? Like, I'm not that person, but it is, you know... Like, I... Like, James Sunderland, the protagonist of Silent Hill 2, is 29 years old. Which is like... <laughs> I'm 27 now, so it's like, oh god. <laughs> so it's just like, stuff like that is so fucking weird. Also, like, video game characters, like... They're so mature. But then you look at their rage and they're like, 21. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's like they have a house and kids and the fucking grandchildren on the way. It's like, yeah, I turned 26 last week. God. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. Ephema and Scold are final bosses. That's wild. I wish Union Cross was... I wish Union Cross was a real Kingdom Hearts game. And not some fucking mobile game. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be saying it, but sometimes it slips out, you know? That game deserved more. <laughs> so cool.
Pauline letter. Yeah, exactly. You can't even play it. So it's like, I'm not even saying it's a bad game. I'm just like, imagine if it was just like, you know, a real Kingdom Hearts game where you like run around the worlds in real time and press the X button, you know? It's like, jeez. Oh, that's not an attack. How are you doing, Omelette? Pretty cool. Fun enemies. I love how enemies are just not designed for you to hit them, I guess. Yeah. I don't really particularly like how much of this game is designed around aerial combat, despite the fact that it's just terrible at aerial combat. It's like a lot of abilities like Graviga or Gravira or whatever, or like Magnet, they send the enemies above you. But in reality, gravity should mean that, like, you know, you should be able to, like, suck flying enemies and put them down to the ground at you to continue a combo. Like,. That's how it should have been designed, so it's like completely ass backwards. A lot man, a lot of this game is just like you really wonder like if it was play tested. You know, it's like how, how, like how can you ship the game? Oh shit, it's it's her. It's like, why can certain bosses and enemies just, like, ignore your hit stun? They just ignore it, and it's just like, okay, I'm just gonna retaliate with a move that you cannot react to. Maybe sometimes you can guard it, maybe sometimes you can't, but, you know, there you go. And there's a fuck ton of damage, too. Like, you're not allowed to play the game. Hell? In a Kingdom Hearts game? Holy moly. Powers of Hell? Whoa. Didn't expect that. Yeah, it's censoring like heaven and hell and stuff like that is pretty much a thing in any like Christian slash Catholic dominated society, I think. Oh, hello. Where are you going? Huh? Huh? Bomb. Oh, whoa. Okay then. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like something the original Maleficent would say, but it is interesting that they would leave that in a Kingdom Hearts game. All 
Fuck him up. Fuck her up. Does she have the blood here? Or is that censored? Oh, that's censored. Does she have green blood or red blood in the original movie? I think she had a red blood, right? Oh yeah, Axel said some shit in the original Game Boy game, didn't he? It's the power of true love that defeated you. He said like, fuck you, Sora, or something. I think I remember that. I would know I have a chain of memories on the Game Boy. You don't even know the first thing about it. You're too clouded by darkness to see that there's something greater. I'd love to see Aqua and Maleficent interact in the new saga. Be pretty cool. All these princes kissing all these princesses. Try all you want. But you'll never defeat a heart filled with light. Perhaps. But remember one thing. As long as there is light, there will be darkness. True. Time, Try telling the Master of Masters that. And they will all belong to me! <laughs> Tara, you better stay strong for me. Very stars. Xenos reports. Nice. Oh. Yeah, I remember that titular scene when Donald Duck called uh, Goofy a dickhead. That was really crazy. I remember that. Um. Okay. Ah, Radiant Garden. So, I am going to save the game here. My coffee here as well. The warm. Mm. I'd kill to have an Emperor's New Groove world to see the Maleficent interact with Kronk and is yeah. You know, I'm gonna make you hate me right now. I saw Emperor's New Groove for the first time like a handful of years ago. Didn't really like it. I guess I understand why people do. It's definitely like original and quirky, but I don't know. It was like aggressively mid. Uh, but you know, you're you're hearing a guy that doesn't even like Kingdom Hearts anyway, so you know, it's not like my opinion actually matters. Kronk? Oh, you mean um the character that's actually carried by Patrick Warburton, yeah. Taskmaster, destroy this man. Aggressively mid. Yeah, I mean like when something is so like, you know. I'm sure it's a very, very good movie, don't get me wrong, but like... If I'm, like, eating, like, food that's incredibly tasteless and bland, but it's, like, not terrible, I'm just gonna be like, yeah, it's just aggressively mid. Like, aggressively. Hmm.
I would rather see a Treasure Planet world than a Emperor's New Groove world. I'm going to be honest with you. And the fact that, like, I think Treasure Planet was scrapped for Dream Drop Distance is kind of a shame. Yeah, I've never been a David Spade fan. Just, just in general. Just in general. So like, you know how, like, Americans just generally don't like Ricky Gervais? Yeah. I just really want to know what the themes of the new saga is going to be. Like, we kind of can assume that it's going to be like, hey, light can be bad too, and darkness is just misguided. You know? And, like, you need balance. I think that's going to be, like, the overall ending message. Maybe. But, like... We all know that the Disney worlds are kind of bent and contorted in a way that th that fits in with the themes. It's like, you know, with, um... Uh, Tangled, right? It's like Tangled and like Rapunzel being an allegory for Namine, which is why Marluxia is there and like feeling trapped and like there's so many themes of sacrifice and love and loss in the worlds of Kingdom Hearts 3 which ties directly into the ending of the game, right? So I'm wondering like what you know what worlds can tie into the new saga. Because I think soul is going to be... like, the soul. Like, we have the heart, the mind, the body, and I think we're going to get the soul. Which, ironically, is like the fourth thing, right? So we have the mind, heart, body. Kingdom Hearts 4 is going to explore the fourth thing, which is the soul. Which is why death is so prevalent in the new saga. So I think Coco definitely is up there. Maybe the Pixar movie Soul could be there as well. Um, and also it just is like a matter of like what is relevant and what is popular as well so like what is congruent with the theme of the new saga but also like Frozen 2 is probably going to fucking be there I'm going to throw in Star Wars as well but like the force is also like kind of soul based right there's a lot of, like, soul theming in, in Star Wars, I think. Like, in the backbone of it all. Um... Yeah, uh, exactly. In, in Japan, 4 also said as she, which is, like... Meaning death as well, you know. Definitely, I think, like, um, the soul and death and stuff like that is going to be super, super prevalent in the new saga. Okay, one second. I am going to up something else. Kingdom Hearts character. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, 
I will say Treasure Planet is a very good choice. John Silver is a good character to portray the idea of characters that have a lot of darkness in them. Yeah, that's true. Like, I think we're going to get a lot of, like, um, torn villains and, you know, Darth Vader as well, as well is, like, a, a great villain because, like, he was the chosen one, right? Anakin was the chosen one. So they could probably, like, play, like, a child of destiny um, parallel with Darth Vader. But he fell to darkness. Which hints that Riku is the child of destiny because he is, again, was the arbiter of light turned to darkness. The original wielder of Kingdom Key turned to darkness. So they could probably do that. Because they always do that. It's like... Well, like Sora will be standing there, or a character will be standing there talking to an original Disney character, going through the trauma of their own movie, and then our character will get a flashback to an original character who's gone through like a similar thing. And it's like this reminds me of Roxas, or this reminds me of this person. It's like we just saw it now with Aqua looking at Prince Charming kissing Snow White, or whatever the fuck. Who kissed Snow White? Oh, Prince, Prince Charming Cinderella, right? No. Yes? Fuck. They're all the same Everyone's the same character. All these men look alike. Prince Florian, is that his name? <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. So when my man is a Snow White, it's like... She automatically had a flashback to Ven sleeping, you know what I mean? So, like, they are obviously, like, offhand, like references or they're like trying so desperately to shoehorn that in right yeah the flashbacks are yeah exactly like kingdom hearts honestly especially early on in, in this birth by sleep era like the comparisons and the flashbacks were so like they were so force-fed you know what i mean like in kingdom hearts 3 when um Sora was sitting with the San Francisco crew, and it's like, I'm gonna turn into Roxas. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. Yeah, Terra was clearly Anakin. Absolutely. Terra absolutely is based on Anakin. Sorry about that. I guess Zootopia, yeah. But like, yeah, the original saga relied so much on... Um... the renaissance era of Disney. And with Kingdom Hearts 3, they were kind of already running out, which is why they kind of had, you know, Toy Story and Frozen and other Pixar stuff. Because it was, like, you know, relevant, you know? That's not like they can use, like, Pocahontas or Sword in the Stone, you know? Coco is perfect. Princess and the Frog is also perfect because of um, what's his name? 
man. I'm blanking completely. You know the villain? I got friends on the other side, that guy. Dr. Facilia, yeah. I was gonna say Felicity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's perfect for a Kingdom Hearts 4 game, right? But, like, the weird part is that I, I feel like a lot of recent Pixar movies are completely void of conflict. Like, of course, like, Mulan is great for a Kingdom Hearts game because we fight a defined villain, there's an army, you know. But, like, Inside Out, Cars, you know, we don't talk about Bruno, it's like, eh, like, I don't see how that can be a Kingdom Hearts world. You know what I mean? Wish, yeah, it's like, I mean, there is a Kingdom, I, I mean, a uh, Pixar movie called Soul, but, like, Sora learns about jazz, it's like, it's honestly partly why I believe that we will get, like, just live-action worlds, like live-action Lion King, live-action Alice in Wonderland with Johnny Depp, you know, Angelina Jolie Maleficent, like, I, I really do think we can get that. Indiana Jones world, I can see that. That's Disney, right? Indiana Jones. We're definitely going to get, like, Marvel and... Star Wars, like, it, that is a given, a given, but I've also, you know, I think we're gonna get Square Enix Worlds as well, like, if Unreality is supposed to be this, like, video game technoscape, then yeah, I think we're gonna get some Square Enix Worlds. Because to me, it's like, reality is like the Disney side, and Unreality is like the Square Enix side, kind of. Like, I don't know how they can justify having a live-action Lion King or live-action Jungle Book, you know what I mean? I mean, they haven't had Jungle Book yet, but I can just see them doing live-action Jungle Book. <sighs> Terrible. Terrible. I really dislike the live-action stuff. I mean, everyone does, but even still, it's like... Kingdom Hearts is supposed to be a fun and colourful video game experience, and like... Cheese. Where's Oliver and company? Put Oliver and company in the game, come on. Disney Channel? Yeah, I mean... I'm just like trying to think like there's not a lot of Disney IP like stuff that would be great for a Kingdom Hearts game that's come out in like the past 10 years. It's like Moana, yes. That that can absolutely be a thing. But like there's so much of just like family struggles and like I don't know, talking and could be a Cars world, could be, but like like why Like, Up? You can have Up as a Kingdom Hearts world? Not really. The Incredibles? Gotta be. Gotta be, right? The Incredibles? That's gotta be up there as well. I think that's up there. Incredibles, Coco, Star Wars, Marvel. Oh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, like, a majority of it, a majority of it was, like, Marvel stuff. Wouldn't surprise me. Great Mouse Detective. Mr. Incredible and Syndrome. Again, like Syndrome, Forsaken Child of Destiny, you know?
Hey Vitrin. We just finished um one of these worlds. Don't know what world we finished. We finish. Uh let me go. Cool. Enchanted Dominion. Yeah, exactly. It's like, in, in Syndrome's eyes, of course, he was like a hero. He was the true hero, you know, what he wanted to be. And again, he fell to darkness. It's like a lot of villains like that used to be good and turned bad. Yeah, that would be really, really good. There's gotta be a, um... The world ends with you world, right? Gotta be. I know he said no, but like... Yeah, live action Alice movies, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna guess that they're gonna remake Union Cross because it's so important to the story. They have to. I think they have to. I I I don't think there's a real way the new saga can conclude with just Union Cross as a cutscene compilation on the mobile phone. I just can't see that happening. So I think we're going to get Reunion Cross. And what game that's going to be? It could be like an MMO. Could be a different game. But it's like with that logic, it's like Days should have had a remake. But like, I can understand why they didn't do that. But with Unchained, or, or just the entire Key Saga in general, it's, it's too important. And those characters are too important. Like Brain, FMR, Scold, they're just too important. Like, they're really, really important. And I can't imagine, like, Missing a Link just being like, Oh, we're going to be active for, like, a few months and then we're just going to take everything down. Yeah, days were just awkward timing, I think. Or Reunion Cross could be like a movie. They they need to do like a series or something, right? Like an animated series or like an Advent Children type movie. It's really past past that time. It's just such a shame that most of Kingdom Hearts is just, like, hiatus, and... ...long development time. And just us waiting in the dark for so many years. I'm really surprised that Missing Link is... Coming out in general, because Dark Road flopped really, really hard, which is why, like, it came out the way it did. Like, Dark Road flopped hard, because it's like Japan, and, like, certain companies have such a narrow-minded worldview of how popular something actually is. And it's like, oh, mobile games are popping up in Japan, but it's like, no, nobody cares anywhere else. And I wish more Japanese video game companies actually knew that. People really, really, really hate mobile games. They hate them. And just because, like, they're successful in Japan doesn't mean they're going to be successful everywhere else. It's like the gacha 
culture in Japan is just something of its own, and they need to see that. And I think they do. Like, Dark Road commercially was a dumpster fire. It just completely backfired, and they're like, oh, okay, let's just release everything at once. So the fact that Missing Link is coming out with 3D graphics and higher budget, evidently, is a little bit concerning. But hopefully, in a way, I actually kind of hope Missing Link does fail like Dark Road, so we just get the story early. Instead of just being dragged out constantly. But it's, it's a little bit alarming that they suddenly think like, hey, maybe Dark Road failed because it wasn't like the classic Kingdom Hearts gameplay. And it's like, no, it failed because it's a mobile game and people hate mobile games. Like, that should be your primary philosophy. Like, mobile games are a side thing, they will never be com comparable to a main thing. People don't like them. But yeah. So in a way, I kind of do hope mobile games do fail a bit. So it stops some... Um, you know? Businesses being greedy and doing what businesses do, which is being greedy. And it's like, their focus should have been with releasing DLC for a game like Melody of Memory, yet they didn't, and they decided that Dark Road would be a good idea. That's such a shame, because Xehanort's backstory is such... It's, it's like what an interesting idea like what a shame that it had to be on a mobile game that absolutely bombed like I feel no I feel no connection towards any of Xehanort's classmates or anything at all and it makes you realize just how much 3D graphics and a voice actor does for a character Like, it makes them seem more tangible. A lot of the classmates in Dark Road, upper classmen and lower classmen, kind of just look like... Like, character create... like, custom characters things? I don't know. Bragi looks sick. But the upper classmen look like complete dog shit. And Odin looks boring as hell. The only interesting thing we got from Dark Road Finale was the Child of Destiny speculation. Um, yeah, we, we, we got like the um, Xehanort is a descendant of Ephema. That whole mess when in reality he should have been the reincarnation of player because that's way more thematically better in every way. It's just funner and more interesting and it justifies player a lot more. And I don't know what Xehanort being a descendant of Ephema does doesn't really do anything for him. So it's like, okay, Ericus and Xehanort are blue bloods. How fun. Yeah, the fact that Missing Link comes on iOS and Android devices that'll burn out your battery is really making me hesitant to download. Yeah, I, I've, I, like, I've seen the gameplay. All I'm really looking for is how the story is going to be delivered, because if it's going to be like chapter one, you're going to do gameplay, you're going to have three cutscenes, and you're going to have to wait three months before the next chapter comes out. It's like, fuck that. Give me the game. Give me the story. I said this last stream, I, I'm really hesitant. I'm really... Scared. For Missing Link lasting for the entirety of the Lost Masters arc and ending, you know, just before the finale. I'm really scared. Like, it better end before Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out. Also, English dub. Hello? I want to hear Brain's English voice. 
Tom Holland, come on. What are we doing? Ben Starr or Sigurd, come on. Also, where is Zac Efron in Kingdom Hearts? About time he, he showed up. Ugh, if I got to audition for a Kingdom Hearts game, you'd have no idea. I'd, I'd kill myself, because like, you know, that's it. I just completed life. I'm in a Kingdom Hearts game. speedrun <laughs> yeah it's really worrying that we've had two trailers and not one of them has been English yet it's strange it leads me to believe that the game won't be in English well or at least dubbed in English which is very weird very weird unless we're just gonna get a bunch of trailers like right before the game comes out Too busy doing movies like Iron Claw. God, it's so crazy. Oh yeah. So you know um the boys, the show about the, the heroes and the villains and whatever. Um how Haley Joel Osman and Billy Zane were in a scene together. I was like, oh that's Sora and Ansem. I was watching Supernatural, and one of the villains is played by James Patrick Stewart, who voices Zigbar. And he it might be a different series, but he does a scene with Billy Zane. I'm like, it's fucking Zigbar and Ansem. It's crazy. I love shit like that. Like when you just see like two Kingdom Hearts voice actors in a scene together and it's like, they have no idea what they mean to people. They have no idea what them being in the same room means. <laughs> it's crazy. Let me see if I can pull it up for you. Um... I don't think it was Supernatural. I know he was in Supernatural, but I think it was a different movie or a show. Oh yeah, Samantha Who. If you know about Samantha Who. Hi. It's been a while, man. Hold on. Meaning I've been here before. Meaning you probably want me to leave. Really sorry. Would you like to play? Oh, no. God, he has like the best voice ever. I love his voice. Um, let me see if I can pull up a screenshot. Welcome back, Miss Newley. Thanks, Bill. Good to be back. New shooter. Evening. Hi. I'm just trying to help you, Bill. I mean. How can you stay in business if people lose? You know, that is just not a model for success. I really you know? wish I could help you, Ms. Newley. Okay, here's the thing, Bill. Where is it? I have amnesia. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here it is. Oh, come on, Bill. Let me sign for another 30. Cut her off, Bill. Yeah? Then you'll get cut That's so crazy. Hold on. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Let me just take a screenshot here. Save it. Look, James Patrick Stewart and Billy Zane in the scene together. That's fucking Zigbar and Hanson, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> they have no idea. They have no idea. No idea what they mean. I look at Anthony, Billy Zane with the purple and the black. Heartless coded, you know what I mean? So sick. 
So cool, right? I'd love to see it. <laughs> it really is. Also, he's an amazing singer, by the way. James Patrick Stewart. I'll post one of his songs in the chat. It's beautiful. Yeah, most of the Kingdom Hearts voice actors are just singers. It's like Jesse McCartney or like Disney kids, singers, pop stars, all the all the sort. Just kind of waiting for Ariana Grande to be the voice of Skull or some shit. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Would not surprise me. Yeah, Christopher Lee. Like, like, the pedigree for some of the talent on Kingdom Hearts is... Man, it's world-shattering. It's insane. And Corey Burton, jeez. Carrying every single old male character on his back. Also, something that's really, really crazy. You know Guile from Street Fighter? In Street Fighter V, he was voiced by... Um, Travis Willingham, who's the voice of Ased. But in Street Fighter VI, he's voiced by Ray Chase, who's the voice of the Master of Masters. So it's pretty weird. But technically, by proxy... Ray Chase can do an Ased impression. By proxy. Pretty weird. Yeah, Chanel Grey is insane as well. Like, some people just have a, an amazing knack for voiceover. It just goes to show that, like, acting and voice acting are two separate ball games. Like, of course you need to be a good actor to be a good voice actor. But just because you are a good actor, doesn't mean voice acting is going to be so easy for you. There are in incredible... It's like, we just talked about Willa Holland, for example. In this game, there's a lot of flat takes in this game. You know? A lot of flat takes. But she got into the game for a reason, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say too much about... James L. Jones, you know? All I can say is fingers crossed. That's all I can say. But, man. Because we're gonna get Star Wars, we're definitely gonna get Darth Vader. But I, I, I feel like there are so many great Darth Vader impersonations, but even still, it's like, we had Mark Hamill as Ericus. can we get James Earl Jones, you know, it's like, that would be great. James Earl Jones is retired, doesn't surprise me, he's already proven himself, 
If you guys don't know yet, like, James Earl Jones, yeah, he is the voice of Darth Vader. And, and Mufasa, you know, it's like, he, he does a lot of stuff, but like, James Earl Jones is... I think James Earl Jones is in my top... He's definitely in top 10 actors of all time for me, because I've seen some of his stage work as well. James Earl Jones is fucking insane. Um, he did King Lear as well. I saw that, that was amazing. Um, oh, is he Mufasa in Cage 2? Okay. Pretty cool. Like, he doesn't need to come back, he's already proven himself. Like, even still. Yeah, it's interesting what, what actors say yes to Kingdom Hearts and what actors turn it down. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I have no idea what's going to happen with Elrena or Larxene. Even Lorium, like, what happened to them? I don't know why they keep jumping about in, in terms of years, you know? It's like, Union Cross was so confusing because it happened over the course of five fucking years, and it's like, what are you talking about? What? It's like, how is there an entire year gap between Kingdom Hearts 3 and Melody of Memory? Like, what have Lorium and Elrena been doing? What have Maleficent and Pete been doing? It's like, what the fuck's going on? Where are the Foretellers and Lushu? They've apparently been scouring the ends of the Earth. The worlds and everything in between. It's like, they can't find Sora, yet they can't find anything to do with these other characters. It's just really weird. The new actress who played Elena in... Seven Rebirth sounds exactly like Chanel, just a bit younger. Isn't Ray? I think his name's Reno. He's Quentin Flynn, right? Like that's the whole point. Like a lot of the organization characters were based on like other Nomura-inspired characters. Used to be okay. Yeah, Axel is Reyno. Yeah, and fucking Ray Chase voices the dog, right? <laughs> Pretty funny. They got recast for the remake series, yeah. Just so hilarious to me how, like, so many of us thought that Ray Chase only got the... the the gig for Master of Masters because he was Noctis, and it's like, no. Nah. Nah, he just, he's just a voice actor, and he auditioned. And I like the new guy better, make him Axel. Oh, shit. Imagine if, like, people got recast for the new saga. Imagine. The dog, Red, is voiced by Max Mittelman? Are you sure? Red 13. I'm pretty sure he's Ray Chase, right? Oh, look at that. Oh, weird. Okay. Liam O'Brien voiced him in Advent Children. And Max voices him. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. 
pretty cool. That's a really, yeah, that's a really good uh, thought, PJ. If they knew he was Noctis, I can almost promise you they wouldn't have cast him as the Master of Masters. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess in a weird, twisted way, it kind of helps, doesn't it? Like, now that we know that Noctis on, and Versus 13 is going to be some weird basis for the new saga or some shit. Did you take my mod power? I think me timing you out did that automatically. That's so funny. Me timing you out gets rid of your mod status. That's pretty funny. Uh, how do I mod someone? Oh yeah, hold on. I don't know, should I mod PJ? I don't know. The damage I'm about to do in your Discord. I'm your favorite person, you know, favorite spelt wrong, you know. It's okay, we all make typos. You know. <clears throat> How do I ban you? Fuck if I know. Um, so Ava and Gula were like 10 in back cover? No, they weren't. They were like, I'd say like 14, 15, 16 around that age, but 10. Oh, some sort of papaya. Thank you so much for the follow. And the fucking alerts are working now, for some reason. Cool. But thank you for the follow. Um, no, but like, Brain got his role in a four-year flashback, and Brain is like 14, 15 in Union Cross, meaning that he was like 10 or 11 during back cover, which is like, or like at least before back cover or around back cover time. It's like, what the fuck? Like, why do they keep jumping years? It's, it's so stupid. What do you think they'll take from Versus 13? I mean, like, when, when something happens in Kingdom Hearts, it's very easy to fall in love with that honeymoon period of like, you know, the first two months of something being revealed. And then, because so much time passes, we get bored of it. And we internalize it, and we forget how impactful it was. It's like a, a prime example of that is Zigbar being Lushu, right? It's like, whoa, mind-blowing mind moment, right? And you already have people being like, well, actually, what if, like, Zigbar is brain, pretending to be Lushu? I'm like, guys, shut up. Shut the fuck up. Um, so my point is, I think a lot of us have forgotten, like, in Remind, they remade the car scene from Versus 13 shot for shot. Like, that, do you know how crazy that is? That's fucked up. That's crazy. Like, that's not just like, oh, you know, the least egg. This is like, no. Versus 13. Hello, Versus 13. It's like, oof, crazy. I need to see when the five years ago scenes happened. Ava and Gula are kids, they're noted in game for being similar ages to their union members. That's why Ava is easy to, to talk to. I'm kind of of the belief that most of the Kingdom Hearts characters are like, Sora Kingdom Hearts 1 age, so like around 14. I can't see Arva being like 11 or 12. I just can't really see that. It just doesn't really feel that way. Could be. But I just don't think so. Also just ages and time in Kingdom Hearts just weird anyway. Yeah, like... The way this series is kind of formatted, it kind of beckons that response from fans and players. They get inside their own heads and they start like, they get bored of their own theories and they start making theories to justify their own theories. It's like a painter adding a few more strokes to their finished product and it just ruins it, you know? It's like a lot of people, they just go too far. And it's like, 
mate, you're not the writer of this fucking series. Like, get over yourself. Like, there's a difference between speculating and theorizing, you know? It's like, how, how can you speculate that, like, I don't know, Demix is the master of masters because they're both funny? It's like, there's not, there's nothing, there's nothing there. Like, get outside, go to the fucking parking lot, and fight your friend with the Keyblade. Right? Just, just leave it. Just leave it alone. But, but, but PJ. But PJ. Demix is quirky. And he looks like Type Zero Man. That means he master. That means he master master. <laughs> Riku doesn't have a cast in Kingdom Hearts 2. Well, actually, actually. If you actually uh, data mine Riku's Kingdom Hearts 2 model and look beneath the cast, you can actually see that the, uh, the polygons around the bone are actually broken. Uh, no. Uh... <laughs> if Ava is Subject X, she's canonically 15, around one year post-BBS. Yeah. And Ava and Skald are the same. You know what? Keep saying it, PJ. I might actually fucking believe you one day. I mean, I'm out here entertaining the possibility that Lushu is just a brain look-alike. And the more I think about it post-brain teaser, the more I'm like, oh fucking god. Like, what if Lushu was never human? Like, what if brain was the original and, like, Lushu is some, like, test tube baby, you know? They're all look-alikes. Yeah, I'm scared. Like, I definitely believe that there is obviously a parallel between, like, Ira and Riku, Ava and Kairi, Aqua and Invi, Gula, Ven, Ased Terra. Like, there's obviously a parallel. And people, again, people forget that because a lot of time has passed and they've internalized those thoughts to the point where they've just become so muddied and there's so much other stuff to think about that they just forget how basic it is. It's like, there's a whole, like, vessel thing going on, right? So it's like, who's to say that the primordial darkness isn't, you know, gonna kind of scapegoat its way into the new cast? Or, or you know, some shit like that. You know what I mean? Oh, you said it. The main cast are potential new vessels for the foretellers. It was all decided. It's like, people forget that, like, hey, I said Terra, like, they're so similar and stuff like that. If Brain is voiced by Max Mittelman, yeah, it's crazy. The only thing that makes me doubt that is that I did do a voice comparison between Brain's voice in the Missing Link trailer and Lucius' voice in back cover. They are just so, they're completely different people, which leads me to believe that they aren't the same voices, therefore not the same bodies. It was all decided. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like, if Ased removed his mask, would he look like Terra? I don't, I don't think so. They look very, like, I've seen like really weird fan mock-ups and it's like, dude, Ira's hair is like blue, lustrous and long. Like that's his hair, you know? And it's like, I'm pretty sure that like, Ava's hair is like pink, right? based on her colour scheme, and Envy's is going to be blue. Ghoul is going to be like brownish blonde, maybe sandy blonde. I'm still of the belief that if Xehanort has silver hair, which is like very bright coloured, then the Master of Masters is either going to have black hair, or like 
Hmm. Could could see him being blonde, but I just don't think so. Either black hair or like red hair, like Kyrie. I could see that. The hair isn't the same color as their clothes. Bad character design. What hair color do you think Ava has? I mean, if she is scold, maybe black, but like a bald of balds. I, mean, I, I can't really speak for the other foretellers, but that is definitely Ira's hair. Like, Ira's hair is visible, for sure. Like, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. Which leads me to believe that the other foretellers are going to be at least somewhat similar. Canonically, to me, like, OG Lushu has, like, grey hair. I don't know, I don't know why. He just has that vibe going on. Is the reason why we haven't got a green haired character because green hair fucking sucks? Is that why? If Skull isn't subject X, which the game wants us to think she's not at this point, yeah. I think Ava has blonde hair. I don't know. I just see her having like really like pink floral hair. I don't know. Because like what if she is like an ancestor of Kyrie's, you know? Like, I could just see her having similar hair colour to Kyrie, you know? Also, I just want to say, Ira's design is pretty cool. I like Ira as a foreteller. Ava's my favourite, but Ira's a pretty close second. Ira just wearing a wig would be hilarious though. It's really weird because I've seen so many fan renders and fan art giving Ira a completely different hairstyle as if like that's not his hair. I'm like, why? I'm like giving I said green hair. I'm like, eh, really? Like, I've always just gathered that they just kind of look like who they're supposed to look like, you know, like I said's gonna have brown hair like Terra. Envy's gonna have blue hair like Aqua, you know. I've just kind of gathered that. I could be wrong, but like, eh. OG Lucia with black hair and purple eyes. I've kind of... I think OG Lucia has dark eyes. But it's so hard to tell because Bra Braig has brown eyes. And Bragi has, like, amber eyes, right? <clears throat> Kingdom Hearts, Bragi. He looks so sick, dude. What a sick character. By far the best classman. I love his fucking coat, dude. Looks so great. However, based on that, if Ava is Subject X, then the character reports have already confirmed that she has black hair. Yeah, exactly. But, like... Wasn't that, like, a translation discrepancy, though? Like... I remember that. Like, in, I think it was Axel's or Syax's character report. They mentioned a 15-year-old girl with black hair or something. But in the English, it was completely different, but... OG Lushu was one of my first conversations with Mel. Characters don't have the, the same hair colour as their robes, they just don't. It would be monochromatic. It would be. It would be. It's better than, I said, having green hair, though. God, imagine. Ugh. Ugh. Brown coloured robe. Green hair. Ugh. What am I looking at? A fucking tree? Yeah, Bruggy has a Sans under Telco. He fucking does. Oh my god. 
that's really weird to know is like obviously Xehanort has silver eyes meaning that the yellow eyes is just more of a darkness thing than it is a Xehanort thing it's like indirectly it's like yeah you got possessed by Xehanort you have yellow eyes but it's because Xehanort had yellow eyes because of the darkness so but the silver hair thing is really weird though it's like Lushu's vessels don't take his hair colour. I also think Lushu has an earring. Don't know why, can't tell you why, he just kind of feels like he does. He has a stud. Don't know, can't, can't tell you why, he just has that energy. Don't know if you guys agree. My, um, I guess, uh, headcanon is that Zigbar having a ponytail is due to Lushu's influence, and the original Lushu had a ponytail. And whenever Lushu has a vessel for a long time, he just lets the hair grow. Have teal hair based because his secondary color is teal. Look at the fucking designs. Jesus, color theory. Yeah, Aqua has blue clothes and she has blue hair. <laughs> blue hair and pronouns. Envy is white. Huh. Arthur having white hair seems pretty fitting. I could see that happening. Like Arthur having like jet white hair and eyebrows and eyelashes. Be creepy. And having red eyes, like, ugh. That would be pretty crazy, right? Are we sure Lushu isn't originally ginger and Bragi does have his hair colour? Well, with that logic, Brake should be ginger as well, but Brake and Bragi look nothing alike, which means that Lu Xu's body hopping is completely seamless, at least to our knowledge right now. Like when he possesses someone, he just. There's no trace of Lu Xu. Which is why it's so weird. Like a lot of people before Kingdom Hearts, like before that, um. Interview where Nomura confirmed that Bragi, oh, sorry, Brake was always um, Brake, and also like because Bragi says as if, which means that Brake has always been Lushu because they both say as if. That's a Lushu trait. People thought that Brake got possessed by Lushu after his fight with Terra, and it's like there's a lot of things that could suggest that, but you know. Because, like, before that point, Lushu never said as if, but Brague and Zigbar do. It was like, is that like a Lushu thing, or is it like a Brague thing? And then Bragi says it, and it's like, okay, it's a Lushu thing. Open up paint and put the colours next to each other. Look, I'm not talking about what's good and bad. I'm just saying what they are. There's, pl there's plenty of bad character designs in Kingdom Hearts. Look at the upperclassmen, you know? Fuck it, what if they're just clones of the upperclassmen? <laughs> like, I don't see why they have, like, established lower classmen and then upperclassmen. It's really weird. Yeah, the upperclassmen are fucking dog shit, to be honest. Sorry. Mostly they're good. <laughs> nah. They look like custom characters. Well, I think technically they are, right? They just reuse assets from Union Cross, right? Don't they? Pfft. 
<laughs> I almost said white power and then went nope. <laughs> Yeah, but PJ, remember last time when we talked about hair colors in Kingdom Hearts? Didn't go so great, did it? Sigrun. Speaking of upperclassmen and Dark Road, man. The Norse names, they need to stop. They need to cease. Give me original names like Xehanort. Xehanort's such a sick name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dark Road. Upperclassman. Yeah, Sigrun's pretty cute. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of firsts here. Vidar. I don't like this guy, the ninja looking guy. Not a fan. Not a fan. Elgi, yeah. Oda, garbage. Vala, garbage. Is it Vali? Vali's the uh, ninja? Pretty bad. Heimdall. Heimdall's a boss in God of War Ragnarok. Oh, I mean, so is Odin, right? <laughs> God, why did they use Norse names? So terrible. What a shame, right? Absolute shame. It really does take away from becoming attached to the characters. Like, I was saying, like, how much 3D graphics and a voice actor does for becoming attached to a character, but also just the name as well, like... How can I care about a character called Odin in Kingdom Hearts? Out of all of the upperclassmen, Sigrun's definitely the best. By far. By far. <sighs> Vidar is a close second. <clears throat> Where did Namini get her blonde hair from when Kyrie has reddish hair? I think it's from Ven. Because Ven was also within Sora. That's that's the only reasonable explanation right now as to why Namini has blonde hair. Like, obviously Roxas was designed before Ven, obviously, but even in Kingdom Hearts 2 we had shades of Birth by Sleep here and there with Zigbar and stuff like that saying shit. So I think at first, Namine was supposed to parallel Roxas in that regard. Because it's like, you can't have just like, another Sora lookalike running around, right? Like, Vinitas looks like Sora, but you know, he has black hair and yellow eyes and a different costume. Yeah, because it's cool. Yeah, I, I think Lushu... Grey hair, purple eyes would be pretty cool. We can also vaguely see some hair in the uh, Union Cross artwork, you know, with Lorium holding the flower, and um, who we can assume to be Lushu holding the bleeding heart flower. We can kind of see like a nose, a bit of an eye, and, a, and some hair. But that person looked so young. Like, really young. And Lushu is definitely older in Union Cross, which is, again... Fucking... The time frame of the Key Saga, I don't want to... I need to get therapy over that shit. Yeah, I hate Freya's design too. Yeah, it's, it's pretty not great. It's pretty not great. 
Ramus is pretty bad. Yeah. Missing Link ain't a good looking game right now. It's just not a good looking game. Also. Why don't we just go back here? What's the point? We're not playing the game anymore. Nomine's existence is so fascinating and bizarre. You have to fall to darkness to get a nobody, but Kyrie is a heart of pure light and therefore can't fall to darkness, so her nobody is a bizarre miracle of an existence. I can't remember what the full explanation of it all was, but yeah. He does have a Roman name. Again, Romulus having blue hair would be fucking crazy. And that, like, Ro Ramus and Romulus being brothers, meaning that, like, Isa and Lee are, like, long, like, distant relatives, would be... Pretty crazy. <laughs> Pretty fucking insane. Hmm. I think they pretty much paid off on, like, that front. I mean, we didn't have Thor and Loki, right? But, like, we have Skold. We have Vor, right? So we need Verdandi, right? No, sorry, Skald and Erd. So we need Vedandi, and I'm still believing that Vedandi is Zaynot's mother. Currently. Could be a completely different character, but I think Vedandi is Zaynot's mother. Because, you know, the three Norn witches of past, present, and future are representing different time periods. So you have Skald from the that period. You have Erd from this period. Then in the middle of it, Vedandi. So that's what I think. I think we are the Romulus because during the closed door beta test, the dev said Ramus is supposed to be a big brother figure to the player. Maybe. See, that's the thing with like these names, like Greek, Roman, Norse stuff, is like we don't know if anything, like how much they're going to play into the actual lore of the name itself. Because, like, Sigurd, what does he do? He's like a hero that dies by facing a dragon. It's like, is he going to do that? Probably not. It's just a name. Like, Odin. Odin took it, took out his own eye to see power. It's like, people were fucking saying that Odin is the master of masters. And it's just like, oh, jeez. It's like, if only you didn't use these fucking names and actually came up with really cool, interesting original names to give your characters more character. It's like, okay. Yeah, I, I just still think Xehanot's mother is Vedandi. Vedandi is such a sick name as well. Like Xehanot. Like Xehanot has been such an old name since Birth by Sleep and Kingdom Hearts 2. You know? And it's just like, it has an X in it. They've already used the anagram of both another for the password of the computer room in Radiant Garden and no heart with the boss in Birth by Sleep. It's like, what an incredible name. So the Master of Masters better not be called fucking like Kylus or some shit, you know? I could, I could so totally see that. You know, Kylus meaning sky parallel to Kylum. I'm just bracing myself for it. Call him Lucifer. Come on, be fun. Nah, that'll be terrible. Like, Balder didn't get killed by Mistletoe. Yeah, it's like, they don't have any parallel to their Norse counterparts at all. They're just names. And maybe they're not as popular in Japan, but it's really weird because like Thor and Loki are so huge in, in Western pop culture 
And then seeing like fucking Odin? Odin is the master of Xehanort and Ericus. Whack. Terrible. Aether? Aether is, yeah. Yeah. Aether's definitely up there as well. There could be like some sort of like astrology zodiac thing going on as well. I do think Superbia is a red herring. That's all I know. Or, or at least I think I know. I think Superbia has more to do with the box and the, the darkness pride than it does of the Master of Masters himself. I think he's way too endgame to be called like Superbia. And what a terrible fucking name. Superbia. Dum dum dee dum 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 dee dum dum disturbia. Terrible. Yeah, you can call me Soup or Super. My name is Super. Super Duper. Like, fuck you. Just, yeah, it's just a terrible name. It's like, as a main villain, you need to have like a ominous... Like, your name needs to have, like, this gravitas, you know? I think so, too. I think, again, the Master of Masters bestowed the Foretellers and Lushu their names. I think the names are titles to beckon those sins, and the sins representative of the darknesses. So Lushu is the lust darkness, with Vinitas being, like, van vanity, you know, stuff like that. Superbia is the name of the Head Darkness, and the Master refuses to take that name as his own. I will not merge with that corresponding darkness, unlike the Foretellers. Yeah. It could... I think the Master of Masters name has a really, really high chance of just being like an original name. Um, I've... I'm siding with the Nameless Star's name being Astoria. So A-S-T-O-R-I-A. Which is like a derivative of Star. So Stella. So I, th I think Astoria has the, like this regal ring to it. Which is very, very fitting. So I would not be surprised if her name is like Astoria. But other than that, I... They could reuse Stella. God, remember! <laughs> when people thought her name was Sora? Funny. You guys are funny sometimes. Make me laugh. Yazora and Astoria, yeah. God, it's so fucking crazy that that is Yazora, but it's not what he looks like. So it's like, who is the guy then? Who is that guy? Is it Yuriku? Yeah, and it's like, you see it all the time, people always think on the basis of what we currently know now, and they don't understand that, like... Like, just because we're so used to nobodies and anagrams with X's doesn't mean the master is a nobody with an X anagram or some shit. It's like, it doesn't have to be that way. I'm never gonna guess what's inside the box, because I think it has direct ties with stuff that has yet to be revealed to us. All I know is that, like, yeah, there's some Pandora's box parallels going on, but the name is Yokairi. I'd probably jump out of my window. Probably. Probably break my neck. I will say. It is weird that there is a difference between the remind cutscene between Young Xehanort and Master of Masters and the Dark Road cutscene between Young Xehanort and the Master of Masters because when the Master of Masters says his name in Kingdom Hearts 3, it's completely silent and there's a flash of light. But with Dark Road, there isn't a flash of light. 
it just zooms in slightly, and there's a separate speech bubble with three dashes. And that kind of implies that maybe his letter is three... Sorry, his name is three letters. Could be. It is very strange that he would just have, like... Like, like why would you remake the scene but not remake that moment the exact same? Like, why would you just not... Like, why, like why would you make a new separate speech bubble to say a name that he doesn't say? And, and have three dashes? It's just, it's just weird. So that gives more credence to, to his name possibly being Sol. But, it could be Kai, you know, K-A-I, or C-H-I, like the Keyblade. And Master Zay not saying, you know, some say Kai, meaning that, that that is Kai's blade, because he is like the Master of Masters. You know what I mean? Again, I don't know. Yeah, and with Hope being in the box and stuff like that, it's, it's very similar. Soul Keeman. <laughs> Yokairi. Yokai. Yokai, watch! <gasps> yeah, Xehanort King Hearts 3 had goat armor. Well, the goat is supposed to represent Lushu's influence, because Lushu is the goat. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, he is the goat because he's the fucking greatest of all time. But he is like the goat foreteller, like he was. Like that's his rank amongst his peers, and his sin. Lushu, as as the sin of lust, is represented by a goat. Maybe his name is... Yeah, they call me Kingdom. Kingdom Hearts. I need to, like, write a bingo list of, like, overused Kingdom Hearts jokes. The biggest overused one at the moment is, um... The Master of Masters is Sora's mum and his dinner's in the box. That's definitely an overused one. Yeah, the mum parallels with um, Lucifer specifically are, are very, very, very obvious. Like, obvious. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yuzora being the night sky in Japanese. Makes too much sense. So maybe if she's supposed to parallel Kairi in a sense, then maybe it could be like a Japanese word for ocean. Which is Nami? But that's terrible, right? Wait, Nami's wave, right? But Yumi, I think Yumi is Hold on. Ocean in Japanese It's Umi. Umi. That kinda sucks as well. Yeah, no, no, yeah, exactly, yeah. It's like I made a video about it, like, a second ago. Weird. Yeah. You mean I? <laughs> this reminds me of my mindset back in my... Prophecy of the True King days. When I was just on Google, like, looking at Wikipedia pages. Like, different mythology and... and Names and derivatives and stuff like that. Yeah, Nami is Wave. Also, Nominee. Fantastic name. Fantastic name. Gorgeous. And then we have Aqua. <laughs> Yeah, 
Myoho? Is that how you pronounce that? Myoho? Myoyo? A Myojo. They could name her Sekai, which means earth and ground. But that's like Riku's thing though, you know. Riku Riku and Terra are earth and ground, right? I still think Astoria is definitely at the top of my list for her name. I think Astoria is such a delicious name. Delicious. Very regal. Star, you know. Yeah, I, I could see it being Japanese as well. I mean, what's Japanese for Star? It's Honkai, right? Or Hoshi. Hoshi, is it? I did learn Japanese a little bit when I went to Japan. Like Hoshi, right? Hoshi or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, Hoshi. Yeah, can't see that. It's like like we can go down this like rabbit hole of, of trying to guess names, and then you like Google it, and it's like wow, that's like the ugliest sounding fucking name that's ever came out of my mouth. My, my my mouth. Yojo is Morning Star, which I like because Devil implications, but also because it plays with Yuzora's Night Sky. It's like yeah. Yeah, that that is cool. That is cool. But night sky would imply that there are stars in that sky. And her being the only star in his sky has like, you know, some romantic stuff. Makes sense. Or or like moon. What's Japanese for moon? Mmm. But then it's like Aiza, you know. Suki. Pretty garbage. You think Magia and Aegis got name changes, which is why those names got cut? Could be. Absolutely could be. I'm definitely open to that. Definitely open to that. It's like finding the balance between like, okay, what does this word mean? And does it sound good? Spoken to an English audience. Because I think that actually kind of does matter when, like, choosing names with these games. To them, at least. Like, yeah, sure, you can just, like, copy and paste a Norse name here and there, but for characters like this, it's like... The Sora is an obvious... Sorry, Yuzora is a parallel to Sora. But that doesn't necessarily mean that she has to be a parallel to Kairi. And it's like... It, it makes too much sense for Skuld to be Subject X because Axel, sorry, Lee and Isa, Sun and Moon, and with Skuld's obvious star motif going on in her design, it's like Sun, Moon and Stars. So it just makes too much sense. And it's like, okay, if Skuld is the star character, then is she, you know, the nameless star, is she a star character too? You know? Which means that we can have more than one motif, like the like the same motif for more than one character. Which means that Lee being the sun and Master of Masters being the sun, being Sol, and having that Lucifer Morning Star, um, you know, reference doesn't really hurt my uh, my case at all. Yeah, Malusha sounds amazing. Malusha's a delicious sounding name. Nameless Star also has a star necklace. I mean, yeah, she's also the Nameless Star, so there's that as well. 
Like, there's no way her name isn't Celestial. Celeste. Titular platformer. I need to play that game. That game looks really good. Looks right up my alley. Sun, Sin, Kai. Lately I've been thinking Kai, because the Kai Blade. And it's just so stupid and so simple. And it's like, I also think it's going to sound the least like Xehanort phonetically as possible. Xehanort, three sim- uh, What the fuck am I trying to say? Three synonyms, right? Synonym's the wrong word. What am I- Jesus, my mind. Gone blank. Kairi symbol is a papu fruit, her chest piece is a star. I blanked. Yeah, I'm bl blanking. This is blank most of the time, by the way. That's not true. It's fucking terrible. Uh, three syllables. That's the word. Fucking Jesus. Syllables, yeah. Zay or not. Three syllables. So it's definitely not going to have three syllables. The Master of Master's name cannot have three syllables. Um, and it can't start with X or have an X in it, because X is too important to the Darkseeker saga. So it can't have an X in it. So I think it's going to be a very simple name. To juxtapose his very complicated story and... You know, his mind, his... his incredibly complex mind. He's gonna have a very simple, unassuming name, I think, and Kai could be that, you know? I just don't think X is in his name at all. And I can't see it having three syllables. I could see it having like four, or five, I don't know. I could see him having two names. Like, Von Hammerschmidt, I don't know. Yeah, my point being is that, like, just because one character is represented by, like, a, a one motif doesn't mean that that motif can't be used by other characters. Because there are so many star motifs going around. It's like Oathkeeper, you know? I mean, like, of course, a lot of characters are based on Sora and based on Kairi, so they take each other's motifs here and there, but also it's like, you know... It's like Gula. He's a lightning boy. Elrena's slash Larkseen's a lightning girl. It's like, you know. He's a very quick leopard boy. Did you see that lady who named her daughter Marluxia? That's pretty cool. I had a friend in infant school called Riku. Wonder where he is now, wonder what he's doing. Gula is also kind of a dick. This is true. A fucking twat. Yeah, his name is not Superbia, for sure. Cannot be, it just can't be. That would be terrible. I think that would be worst case scenario. Him being Superbia would be worse than him being called Sora. My uncle works at Nomura. What if the Master of Masters is actually Nomura? <sighs> um, 
I mean, we have Brain. Brain is probably the worst name in the entire series, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Like, what a shame. Like, there's got to mean something, right? Him being called Brain. Like, what an intentional name. You don't just call a character Brain without it meaning something. Like, wasn't Brain the name of the first computer virus? Or something like that? Yeah, mum being called Oswald, it hasn't, like, it's definitely crossed my mind. But it's, it's, I've, I just think Oswald's going to be a separate character in Unreality to parallel Mickey, so. Um, how about we stop this music? Sick of it. cool be cool pretty cool yeah come here my mouse is being very nice I'm on Tear Maker. Does anyone know how Tear Maker works? By um by resetting the tier list. Oh here we go. Reset. You like window display. Four, maybe? Oh. Hi. Can you guys see that? This, can't I? And then like move this. Ah. Yeah, that's fine. Banger, by the way. Okay, so earlier I did mention that I wanted to like brainstorm a hypothetical Kingdom Hearts fighting game and who would be like top tier or who would be what type of character or who would be in like season one and who would be DLC or something like that but oh, you can't see Twitch chat fuck dun, 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 dun. so I should probably move this webcam here
and then move this. That's fine. You guys can see that. Okay. That's fine. You guys. <laughs> Why did they pick that picture of Terra? So funny. I've always found that really funny, like the bloodshot, teary-eyed, kingdom shader models. Okay, so of course, I'm gonna say like... Base roster. Sora Riku Kairi is a given. But you want to have like a good strong roster for the beginning of your fighting game. <laughs> um, you'd also want variety as well, and I could see Sora Riku and Kairi playing pretty similarly. <laughs> Like, I could see them being, like, easy to pick up characters, like Sora being, like, Ryu, Riku being, like, Ken, kind of. What's happening? So we're making a, uh, hypothetical Kingdom Hearts fighting game roster, and, who, and we're just discussing who would be in, like, the base game, and who would be DLC. So, in my opinion, perfect character for DLC, who would get a lot of sales, and would make people buy the season pass would be Roxas. Perfect. Yeah, this trilogy icon's pretty fucked up. Um, gotta have Terra. Terra as well. Aqua. Then. Absolutely. Okay, so we have six Keyblade wielders. We need some more variety. Not just in weapons, but in terms of like playstyle. Because like, Terra would be very, very slow, but very damaging. Aqua would be very, very good at controlling mid range. Ben would be very, very rush down oriented, like a glass cannon. So he'd have like very low health, but quite low range as well. But very, very good frame data, good speed, good combos. Sora would be just balanced. Riku would be balanced as well, but like slightly slower, but more damage and more range, maybe. Mm, Zigba would be in base roster. We need a Zona. Um, of course, Ansem as well. Puppet character. Um, Axel would be great as well. Great mid-range character and a stance stance character, so you can switch between Keyblade stance and Chakram stance. Be pretty cool. Zemnus would be, Ansem would be fucked up in a fighting game. If you've seen Eddie from Guilty Gear, because he has this um uh, puppet called Zato, I believe, and it looks exactly like the Guardian, like it's like this dark creature that he can control, and Ansem would be the same thing. Like a fighting game like Smash or something like Street Fighter. Probably something more like Guilty Gear, like a 2D fighting game. Under Night in Birth. So yeah, something like Street Fighter-ish. Like a competitive fighting game. But Zigbar would definitely be his owner. Um, if I were to design this fighting game, I wouldn't give Zigbar no name. Because I'd, I'd probably make Lushu his own character. I don't know, they'd be capable of making Kyrie a DLC character? Nah, that's crazy. 
Um, I would also... So we have Zigbar, Ansem puppet character, um, Lee is your stance character, Lexius, grappler. Like, even though Terra would be, like, slow lumbering, he's more of, like, a heavy hitter kind of brawler character. But Lexius, the classic, like, Zangief, Potemkin, slow moving, getting close, get the command grab, build up his power gauge, you know? Very, very scary character. Good archetype to have in a base roster. Um, we have the Keyblade wielders. We have people that aren't particularly Keyblade wielders here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... I think 13 would be a perfect number for a base roster for a Kingdom Hearts fighting game, so three more characters. We definitely need the oddball, like a character that just doesn't play like anyone else. Aina. Aina's gonna be like the Dan Hibiki, like the joke character, with the struggle bat. Like he's gonna be absolutely low tier, but for sure. So there's two more in the base roster. No, no, no. Pence, Pence is not going to be a playable character. Oh, hell yeah. No. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm deciding between Demix and Zexion. Who do you think? Luxor would be really cool. I, I think Luxor would be DLC, I think. Oh, Xemnas. Gotta put Xemnas in there, right? Yeah. But would Xemnas be good as DLC, though? Old Xenot would be base? Yes, of course he would. Yeah. Just move the, uh, down. There you go. <sighs> okay. So we've 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have one more character in base. I mean, we have Kingdom Hearts 3 villain, we have the Kingdom Hearts 1 villain. Xemnas being in base is pretty par for the course. But... I'm actually going to pick... Oh, hang on. I'm going to pick Larxene for base. And the reason is A, because uh, more female variety, and B, uh, Rushdown. Ven can't be the only Rushdown character in base roster. And also, Larxene is not a Keyblade wielder, and she's rush Rushdown, which is really, really good. We have Aqua, Kyrie. And Larxene, wrapping the females in base roster. But I think this is a pretty good base roster, in my opinion. So. Season 1 DLC. Definitely Roxas. Gotta buy that season starter. Malusha for base? No, no, no. We're done with base. We're done with base. We need to remember that this is a fighting game, and fighting game, like the longevity of fighting games, is based on their DLC. So Malusha is definitely a DLC character. We also need to think about variety as well, like... We have these characters here because they are main characters and they are Keyblade wielders. Like when you think Kingdom Hearts, you think of these characters, which is why they're base roster. And then you have Zigbar, because we need a Zona. You have Ansem, puppet character, very technical and hard to use. You have Lee, stance change. There's loads of stance change characters in fighting games. Lexius is the grappler. Hena is the joke oddball. Of course, Master Zaynot being the villain. And Larxene being some more rush down. Some great variety without Keyblade wielders. Roxas, moneymaker. Absolute moneymaker. Dark Riku. 
I'm not going to say Riku Replica. Obviously, this is Riku Replica, but I think whoever made this tier list mistook Dark Riku for Riku Replica. So this is Dark Riku. Or oh, Ansem Riku. Let's just pretend it is. Zexion definitely the DLC. I, I understand the sentiment, Batari. With like Devil Jin and Jin Kazuma. Dark Riku and regular Riku base. I understand that. I'm just trying to keep the base roster at 13 because it's very Kingdom Hearts. And I think. Well, we are absolutely going hell with the Ape Escape. All five photos for one DLC, that'd be crazy. You have like a key saga DLC pack with all the union leaders. Um, I'm gonna say Ericus is also season one. How many characters are in a pack? I'd say like four would be good. So like, like a character per three months. That's pretty good for a fighting game lifespan. So who's number four for season one? Three Keyblade wielders. Let's throw in a Keyblade, uh, someone who isn't a Keyblade wielder. Demix. Nah, uh, Demix or Luxord? Demix or Luxord? Venetus would be next. Venetus would be next. Isa, Isa, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, Axel's here on his loan, on his lonesome. He's on, he's on his ones, all by his lonesome. This is perfect, perfect. So. So like Roxas would be, again, top tier. People would beg Namura to nerf Roxas. Dark Riku would be like a semi rush down glass cannon kind of Riku clone, but with like new specials. Um, just really interesting mechanics and twists on, on Riku. Um, Ericus would be like a counter character a parry character like Geese Howard or something. He utilizes like high counters and low counters, he's very like um like samurai inspired gameplay. Very technical. Um and Iza would be like he'd have his own gauge, like the anger. Like the, the moon gauge. So like he could sacrifice damage in a combo. Or a knockdown and then like build some meter for his gauge and once it's filled he's like a very 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 strong character are most popular characters in fighting games broken not really especially not nowadays but it is quite clear that if a character is popular the developers want them to be good especially dlc characters Usually if a DLC character is very sought after, they are very good. It's like Akuma from Street Fighter is all, always very, very good. Always. Um, okay, Season 2. Who's, who's going to start off the Season 2 pack? Yeah, most fighting games today are very, very balanced. Very, very balanced. Mm 
be a strong character to start off season two. I kind of want to keep it like varied. I don't want to have like a BBS pack and then like a Kingdom Hearts 2 pack. We're going to do Xemnas. About time Xemnas comes in the game. People are going to be begging for him. Right? Perfect time Xemnas comes in the game. You can't have the villain of Kingdom Hearts 1 and the villain of Kingdom Hearts 3 in the base roster. Have the villain of Kingdom Hearts 2 be 2 long in the future, you know? Depends for season 2. I don't know if you were here, Patari, but I was discussing that if I were to develop a Kingdom Hearts fighting game, the premise would be like, it's a struggle tournament, and Pence is developing a game where he uses data from fighters, and he makes his own fighting game, and Hena is the main character of his fighting game, which is why Hena is in the base roster. So it's really like Data Sora and Data Riku and Data Kairi, so on and so forth. So Pence would be like maybe he'd be in like the tutorial mode and he like give you like Heartless to fight and stuff like that. Or like bugs, you know what I mean? Oh no, 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 PJ, we're doing like a hypothetical Kingdom Hearts fighting game. So this is base roster up here, like 13 characters. We have season one DLC in season two, like a competitive fighting game, hypothetical. Yeah, Pence would be the announcer. I'll just say it to PJ, because I, um, if I were developing my own Kingdom Hearts fighting game, the premise would be that Pence wants to develop his own video game and he uses the computer in the mansion in Twilight Town to get everyone's data for like his own struggle tournament, but it's like virtual. And Hena is the main character of his game, so he boots Hena into the data Twilight Town. And like Hena's like the tutorial character. And like he's like the announcer, like round one fight, and it's just Pence. Pretty cool. It's cute. Yeah. I'd love to do that. And even Lance was saying like Water KH knows how to code, so like maybe one day if I like get really good at Blender and do animations because I've been playing fighting games competitively for like 10 plus years I'd love to make my own little Kingdom Hearts fighting game with like reused assets from Kingdom Hearts 2 and stuff like that It'd be pretty fun, right? Yeah, Kingdom Hearts struggle something and like they all have like unique clothes because like it's it's the Twilight Gang. Like Hena is like the main character of Pence's video game, but Olette is designing costumes for them that are, that are very like fighting game inspired. That'd be really nice. And it's like a school project or something, or like Pence's, you know. Assignment or some shit, I don't know. It's the nice premise. <laughs> so Xemnas would be great to kick off Season 2 DLC. Three more characters. Xemnas is not a Keyblade wielder. Let's have... Shion will be at the end of Season 2, I think. Hey Chris. So, actually, it's good that you mentioned that. If I were developing my own fighting game, I would not have Mickey as a playable character, solely because of balancing. Because if you don't know the whole drama with Soul Calibur 4... Because um, Soul Calibur has had guest characters for years. Um, with Soul Calibur 4 on the PS3 and Xbox 360, on the PS3, a guest character was Darth Vader. But then on the Xbox, a guest character was Yoda. And Yoda, being incredibly small, he broke the game. So I think Mickey, being in a game with humanoid characters, would be really hard to balance him without adjusting his hitbox and his hurtbox really muddy. So I would have Mickey as like an assist or, you know, 
because I'd only have like original Kingdom Hearts characters playable, and I'd have like Square Enix characters as assists and Disney characters as assists. Can't wait to, for the scene where Heihachi drops Lucia off a cliff. Yeah. Be cool. But who's second on this Season 2 roster? Because we have really good variety in the base roster. 13 characters because, you know, Kingdom Hearts and it's 13. Sora, Riku, Kairi. So these six characters are who you think of when you think of Kingdom Hearts Keyblade wielders. Zigbar is the zoner. Ansem's the puppet character. Lee is the stance character with Chakram and Keyblade stance. Lexius is the grappler. Ina is the tutorial kind of beginner joke character. Master Xehanort because it's Master Xehanort and Larkseine because of more um, female variety and also because she's not a Keyblade wielder and she's rushed down as well. Roxas is the money maker. Dark Riku, an interesting spin on the original Riku. Ericus is like a very slow, methodical counter style character with high parries and low parries. And Isa is like a a comeback character with like the gauge, like the moon gauge, being like a comeback factor. Xemnas is good. Vexen. Hmm. I think Roxas not being in the base is a mistake. Exactly. People would beg for Roxas to be in the base game. Why? Sonny, why is Roxas not in the base game? Exactly. Because it's DLC and you're gonna fucking pay for him. Because you want him so badly. I'm thinking like I'm working for Square Enix, you know? Like, obviously, if I were to make this game, all these characters would just be playable, obviously. I'm not going to charge money for it. But, like, if this were an official Kingdom Hearts game, Roxas would absolutely be DLC. It would cause a ruckus, but they'd absolutely do it. He'd make too much money. And he'd be broken. He'd be so busted, and people would beg to nerf him. Beg for him to be nerfed. He'd break the game. Give me Ava or give me Death. Is Ava season two though? Yeah. Yeah. Xemnas and then Ava? Holy m that I don't know about that. That's too quick. That's too quick. It's too quick. Too quick. Yeah. Yeah, but base roster is 13 characters. I don't want to add 14. And I can't really replace anyone here. And I want Haina to be here. I'm gonna say... Say Vanitas. Um. Yep, I think that's season two. I think that's a really good season two. She on to round it off. It's a really good season two. So we have base roster and two years of DLC. Then again.
Because it's like, if this is year two, with like 358 days over two, and she's released on the 358th day of the second year. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Pretty genius. Season three. I think so. Just for the drama. Just for the drama. Can't, I can't. I'm too scared. Ah, that'd be crazy. And we need to save a key saga character for the end of a year. The end of a pack. Just for the surprise factor. Diz, Diz being a playable character would be interesting, but I just can't see it. This isn't Riku replica, this is supposed to be Ansem Riku, but this tier list is weird. So it's not supposed to be a Riku replica, it's supposed to be Dark Riku. But yeah. Honestly, I could see this. I could see it happening like this. Like having to wait for the year. But people won't wait that long for Roxas though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good call, good call. So Young Xehanort to close off season three. But we can't have four Organization 13 characters, so we need to have... Are we missing anyone, by the way? We're missing, like, the upperclassmen. Who are we missing? In terms of like original Kingdom Hearts characters. Are we missing anyone? Also, this is not Zexion, this is Ienzo. I want Ienzo to be in this game. Rhea and Romulus too, yeah. Diz would be interesting, but nobody would pay for Diz. Nobody would pay for fucking Zaldin. And I can't have Malusha and then Zaldin right after, that's weird. Anti I put Antisora in the game, honestly. Like Ryu and Evil Ryu. shouldn't be 13 base characters. It should be 20.
yeah, that's if it, were, if it were a good fighting game. But most fighting games right now have a very, very minimal base roster so that they can pad out the years of success with DLC. So I'm kind of thinking on the Capcom Seven Light 13. Yeah, it makes sense. It does make sense, PJ. It does make sense. No? No. No. <laughs> I just... I just wouldn't have Mickey playable. Like, I know you should, but I just wouldn't. Because in this hypothetical assist-based fighter, you'd have the Disney characters as assists the Square Enix characters as assists. As, as a player, you can choose your assists. Like, you could be, like, an Aqua main and have, like, a Simba assist and a Leon assist or some shit, you know? You could be, like, a Larxene main with a Captain Hook assist and... A Sephiroth assist, you know? So like, my friends are my power, kind of thing. That's why it's an assist-based fighter. Hmm... <laughs> Imagine if anti-Black Coat Nightmare was a playable character. That would fucking suck, right? Or like Lingering Will. Nah, you know what? No. I think, I think this is the right call. Imagine seeing that trailer for the season three and then like FMA shows I'm like, oh. You know what I mean? That'd be fucking hype. That would be hype, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause like up until this point, this is two years, people are like, where are the key characters? Season three, then FMA show, I'm like, oh. Fucking crazy, right? Then we have Lorium. But do we have two union leaders? Ah, I don't know about that. Luxor, I think, would be cool. A variety, Ephemer, then Luxord. A variety. Luxord, then Marluxia. Two organization characters back to back. I mean, it's okay. It doesn't really make a difference, does it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then Young Xehanort. Pretty hype. That's pretty hype. Yo, that would be cool. That would be crazy. And then season four. Bang. I just feel like Young Xehanort would be in the game sooner though. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like this. Gambler of Fate, Time, and then back to back, like, on the front you have Ephema, on the back you have Arva. I like this. I like this. It's pretty cool. I'm actually kind of siding with what PJ said. I think there should be 20 characters base roster. It only makes sense, right? Yeah, 20 does make less DLC releases. But it's like, I can't imagine people waiting four years for Marluxia. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Because, like, one character every three months, that's 12 months. Should a Union Cross character be in the base game? No, that's such a DLC move. That's such a big DLC move. That's a really good starting roster. You have Axe and Sax together, you have Xemnas, Master Xehanort and Ansem as the villains, Ericus and Master Xehanort together. Zexion, there's no character like Zexion in the base roster, he's a very unique character. It just makes too much sense, doesn't it? And people will pay a lot of money for Xion. I think I fucked it. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. I mean, God, like a Kingdom Hearts fighting game would be incredible because there's so much diversity and like character archetypes. I think Sora should be year seven DLC. I think I fucked it. I don't know. Like,
Like six of the seven Guardians of Light are here. That was it, right? I think that was it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so let, let's just keep on with the original idea. I don't think every single character from the organization should be playable, and that's such a controversial take. But I can't imagine a, get a, a world where people are going to pay for Zeldin. And Zeldin doesn't really offer anything that characters like Axel or Zexion can't give you. Because Zeldin would just be like mid-range. Axel has track rooms, he's mid-range. Zexion has the book with projectiles, he's mid-range. Bar is Zona, he's mid-range. You know? There's nothing Zigbar could offer you, and sorry, I mean, there's nothing Zoldan could offer you, and he's not very popular. And Vexen, it's like, people don't like Vexen. Like, yeah, it's Kingdom Hearts, and you should have Organization 13 playable, but like. I'm, I'm thinking. Like Capcom, like Bandai Namco, you know? Like, how do you translate Vexen into a fighting game character when he has a fucking shield and throws ice at people? Like, I don't think he works, mate. I don't think he works. Vexen's ice blade would go hard. Like, Vexen would have a good super, but... Yeah, it'd probably have three seasons at most, it would. So I guess we shouldn't have four characters then, we should have like six per... Like maybe a character per two months? So maybe it should be like this, right? Maybe seven characters per year, but nah, six makes sense. A character per two months? That makes sense, right? Have Roxas start, and then have Shion end it, right? Have her be released on the 358th day of the year. And then that completes, because, you know, Lee's here by himself. But I think we should do this. Is to be like organization Dark Riku, organization Ericus, organization kind of like that. And it's with Ava Light. That's amazing, Umbra. That's amazing. Ends with the. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, Yuzora is the final character, easily. Also, Master of Masters is not playable. 
Not playable. You can make clones, but so can Larxene. Larxene has like that ninja ability. The Vexen making a clone of the opponent. How can you translate that translate that into a fighting game? Like he just makes a mirror match? Like that's weird. I just I just can't see Vexen being a good, a good pick for a fighting game. Like PS1 graphics, it would also make things much easier animation-wise, not having to worry about physics and all other dynamic jump, d dynamic junk, Kingdom Hearts Fighter on the gosh dang PS1. That would be pretty cool. Because I know Water Cage can code, but like, I'd love to do this, hypothetically. Ba -ba -ba -ba. like the idea of Diz being playable. <laughs> it is growing on me. Let's add the gummy ship as a playable character. I was thinking of like a heartless, like fat body or something. Like fat body being another grappler? Because Lexus is the only grappler. Wait, wait for it.
Right? Looks much better. Looks much better. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? It involves a grappler, by the way. He's like Lexius. A heavy hitter.
like real talk. I probably add some. I'd subscribe. I'm sorry, I. <laughs> I'd make Bragi playable. I'd make Bragi playable. But... Most... I'd also have other characters like Heartless and Nobodies playable as well. That aren't here. Like I'd have, I'd have Anti Sora as a separate character. As another close range rush down, without a Keyblade. No, I can't add images to it. I mean, I could, but... but I mean, I kind of don't want to. No. It's Lost Paintings by Symphony of the Night, or from Symphony of the Night. That's the best I can do with this tier list that they've given me, I think. Yeah. Okay, so I think that is it for the stream. We might continue this when I'm less tired. I've been streaming for six hours now. So, I think that's good. 
I will definitely continue this idea and develop it in like a notepad or something.